You are now live, Your Worship. Okay, thank you very much, Kayla. I'm just going to adjust my volume. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our council meeting here on Monday, April the 12th, 2021. Council has met in camera, and we're just returning back to our regular agenda. So at this time, I'm going to go to item number two, which is the approval of the agenda. I'll call for it, and then I'll look for a mover and seconder. Recommendation, be it resolved, that Council of the Township of Clearview hereby approve the agenda for uh, dated April the 12th, 2021, as presented. A mover and seconder on the agenda, please. Uh, Mr. Broderick and Councillor Deneen, any questions? Seeing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And the, yes, uh, the, the motion is adopted. That's the agenda. Um, the deputy mayor is just uh, indisposed at this moment, but he is gonna join the meeting here shortly, just for anybody uh, who's wondering. And I would, at this time, uh, council, I'd just like to introduce our new CAO, John Ferguson, is uh, joining us for his first official council meeting with us. And uh, I know, Mr. Ferguson, you've tuned into some of our council meetings, and I know that you've been spending the last week or so meeting uh, with members of the staff, members of our community, and some of the members of council already. So. John, uh, welcome to uh, Clearview Township. Oh, thank you very much, Your Worship. I'm very glad to be here and I look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I, I know that members of council will uh, be setting up uh, either phone calls or Zoom meetings uh, with each of you to have a good conversation with our new CAO. And uh, we look forward to, uh, to that. Thank you, John, and welcome aboard. Thank All you. right, council. Uh, item number three is our disclosure pecuniary interest. Any, uh, Nick? general nature thereof. Anybody got a disclosure for this council meeting? All right. Thank you. Seeing none, we'll, uh, if anything comes up during the meeting, please bring it forward. We'll deal with it appropriately at that time. And the council item number four is our public participation period. Uh, council, of course, public participation period during this teleconference uh, council meeting uh, should be submitted by written comments to our online uh, portal through clearview.ca. And uh, we did not receive any today for our council meeting, but I do remind the public that they are welcome to do that uh, at any time. So council, uh, I see Sarah Hershoff has shown us. Hello, Sarah, nice to see you. Uh, council, we have some deputations and presentations today. We have three separate items that we're gonna go through. The first one is from our volunteers from the Cremor BIA. Uh, Sarah Hershoff is here and I believe uh, Sarah and Lori should be joining. There she is, Lori Sever, our president of the BIA. Uh, ladies, uh, I would uh, turn the floor over to you for your presentation and welcome you to this meeting. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, does everyone hear me? Am I on? Okay, great. Thank you for inviting us tonight. Uh, Mayor Measures, Deputy Mayor Burton, Councillors, and Township staff. We appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you a little bit more about what the BIA is planning this year and explain to you a little bit more about our budget. And uh, hopefully if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them um, at the end of the presentation as well. Sarah Hershoff is also here, who is the treasurer for the BIA on the management board. And she'll be walking us through some of the numbers and explaining some uh, exciting new projects we have going on with the levy as well. So without much ado, I'm going to go through uh, an abbreviated presentation that we gave at our AGM uh, during our March meeting and uh, just walk you through some of our high level plans for the year. Obviously the pandemic has changed many things, but let's go through and let's explain to you some of the things we've done last year and some of the things we've done this year. So Kayla, if you don't mind, thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over so I can actually see my screen. Okay, perfect. So the pandemic year was a pretty interesting one for the BIA. Obviously a lot of our events were canceled. A lot of the plans that we had um, brewing for at the beginning of the year got, uh, got side, side, sideways there. So what we did do was a lot of really exciting things considering um, the restrictions that we were working within. So I just wanted to sort of walk you through some of the uh, successes I believe the BIA had for 2020. And one of our biggest successes is actually something we did in partnership with Clearview Township. And that was the COVID kit that we created in conjunction with Amanda Murray and some of the folks in the township to help all businesses reopen when it was time to reopen back uh, last May in, in terms of giving us hand sanitizer and all kinds of guidelines. They also provided us with um, stickers for the floor for social distancing, masks, 
it was an amazing kit. So that was a huge success and it was a great collaboration between us and Clearview Township. And we are very appreciative of all the help. Um, we've also did our best to update members with resources and news all throughout the pandemic. We sent out lots of newsletters to our members, just kept giving them information on how they could get grants or how they could get um, CERB or you know, help for the businesses in terms of uh, some of the, the um, things that the Canadian government was providing. So that's something else that we co constantly did was to try to help our members the best we could to help them if they were struggling through the pandemic. Um, the ECHO was really instrumental in donating three pages, three times, um, three pages within the ECHO where they provided names and information for each business in Creemore. And then also um, gave people an option of how they could get in touch with those businesses because all businesses operate differently. And some of them were able to have online sales. Some of them were curbside. Some of them wanted email or um, you know, phone calls to do orders. And so it was just basically a way to keep in touch with our businesses be able to purchase items, being able to, to do takeout from the businesses. So that was something that the Echo really helped us and really, and really donated a lot there for the business community. We advocated for public washrooms. I know it's always a fun, hot, sexy topic amongst uh, Clearview staff and yourselves, but something that was very important to us. And we felt that uh, we, we were able to, to push that agenda forward with on behalf of our members. We worked with Clearview on patio requirements for the restaurants. So we worked very closely with Dan Perot. We continue to work very closely with Dan Perot on uh, patio requirements, sidewalk requirements. Um, he's really helped us give us lots of guidance in terms of what we can and can't do within the town. Um, we also worked with Councillor Patterson in terms of uh, helping invite more bicycles downtown and more bike riders in terms of we got a new sort of green square, you've probably seen it on Mill Street, where it encourages bikes to park. So we have them all in one place and, and not really all over the place, but at least they are sort of con confined to a, a certain area. So it makes it very clear for them when they come into town where they can park. We did a sidewalk sale back in August. So again, we didn't want to encourage a lot of people coming into stores, but we did feel that, you know, with social distancing, we could do a sidewalk sale, which was very successful in helping people, local, basically our local residents come back into town and, and purchase from our shops and restaurants. Halloween, we did a very safe social distancing trick or treat on Mill Street, which I think was greatly appreciated by the community. Um, it was a huge success and we did it in a very safe way with amongst the BIA members on Mill Street. Creamer in the Valley this year, Christmas was a little different than usual, but we did do um, shop local type programs where we had draws, we had gift baskets for people to encourage uh, members of our community to shop locally this year and to continue to support the businesses. And also um, Sarah and her team at the Creamore Echo helped to really organize the Stationary Santa Claus Parade, which was a huge success considering the parameters um, that they had to work with and the Santa Claus Parade with gathering and social distancing. I think it was a really great success that we did. Uh, we've also worked really hard on our Instagram programs. We experience Creamore has, uh, or Creamore Ontario, I should say, has 80% growth. We've done a lot in terms of hiring folks that can help us. We've done a lot of uh, photography and really just tried to boost, you know, our Instagram and really tell the visual story of Creamore. In addition, um, we created a new website this year, which is experiencecremore.com. And it's really based uh, like a tourism website to encourage people to come and visit our town. We haven't promoted it in a really big way because again, we haven't wanted to encourage people from outside of the catchment area from coming into downtown, but it was something that we worked on at the same time so that it would be ready when we are in fact back and running with tourism. <laughs> so those are some of the things and some of the successes we did this year. All right, Kayla, if you don't mind. Thank you. Oops, I don't see the next slide. Eh, okay, great. Okay, so BIA plans. All right, so I'm just gonna walk you through some high level, our key priorities for 2021. Um, so basically we try to narrow it down into sort of four sort of buckets of priorities for the Creamore BIA. One of them is the experience in town. So I know if, uh, if Amanda Murray has presented to you, you will have heard this many times. Tourism and experiential tourism is really the future. And so what we want is people to have a wonderful experience when they visit a downtown like Creamore that encourages them to 
number one, to linger, to stay a while, to maybe visit the restaurants or the shops, and also to come back. So we wanna encourage people coming back in the future. So to be able to do that, we want to make sure that we have a beautiful streetscape that all, you know, we work on all of the um, planters. We want to make sure that it looks really beautiful, that everything is, uh, the weeding is done, you know, everything's clean. It's, it's a beautiful place to visit, to, to browse the shops and the restaurants downtown. This year, we're working on a themed decor, which we're going to talk a little bit more, but our theme decor this year being lavender. So that is something that we will be working on and telling you a little bit more later. And then of course, community support, part of the experience in downtown right now, if you've been in downtown Cremor, we have an art show going on. It's a 10 by 10 canvas framed art show in conjunction with the Purple Hills Arts and Heritage uh, Society. And that each business all the way along Caroline and Mill Street have um, lots of art in their windows that people can walk up and down the street and browse and really enjoy the community's effort to do some wonderful art. So that was a great collaboration between two volunteer groups. And of course, we continue our support of the farmer's market, which is very important to our downtown. Um, <clears throat> we are hoping to really, in, you know, um, boost our BIA relation, membership relations. We continue to do work on our database, newsletters. We now have a, uh, one of our board members, Oda from Quince Bistro, has offered to be our sort of downtown liaison, where he's going to be actually talking to people one on one when he can and when it's safe to do so. And so really, um, you know, getting as much feedback as we can from our members and just continuing to have a very strong relationship with them. We're gonna talk a little bit more in a few slides from now on the long-term planning on the levy review and the boundary review. This is very important to us this year. Um, it's always been very important, but this year we're taking a lot of action on it. Um, the Cremor BIA is not sustainable um, because of the levy that we have. It's not enough money the levy hasn't been changed in probably 30 years. And so we really need to look at the sustainability of the money that we raise and what we can do with that money. And Sarah's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about that. And marketing, you know, we continue to do more marketing about telling the story about um, our digital and social channels, our, the events, should we be able to have some, and physical advertising, uh, rack cards that we're going to produce, print ads that we're looking at doing this year. So a lot of these things too are a little bit contingent on whether things open up in, uh, in the summer, whether we move into green zones or you know, whatever our zoning may be, we're very concerned about public health. So obviously we will follow all the public health guidelines and we won't be having any sort of events or anything like that this year um, if, uh, if public health uh, doesn't deem it uh, safe to do so. All right, Kayla, if you don't mind. Next slide. Okay, so I'm going to hand this part over to Sarah, if I can, and she's going to tell you a little bit about the budget. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty and give you the, all the fun numbers. And Sarah, if you're there. Yeah, I'm here. Great, okay. Hi there, Council. Um, thank you so much for uh, having us this evening. So this year, we have sort of taken some of the money that we would normally spend on activities and we've just put it into beautification to ensure that we have kind of this passive beautiful space for our community and for those who are able to visit safely um, and so we you can see in this slide how we've upped the budget for our flowers and seasonal decor while maintaining um, garbage uh, and watering costs at about the same level as in the past. This year we have the addition of furnishings, which are going to be some beautifully um, painted uh, Muskoka chairs in a lovely lavender color. And uh, those we may use year to year, or they may be just a one year thing. We will uh, we'll consider that at the end of the season. But uh, with all of these changes, we have uh, just put a little extra money into that bucket to, to bring the downtown um, experience just that little bit further up. Things that uh, have changed since we initially created the budget is a conversation that we've had with Amanda and uh, Terry in terms of the ability of um, Clearview to support us with some of our basic maintenance. So in speaking with Terry and Amanda, we understand that we might be able to have some assistance with um, maintenance, weeding and watering, in which case we'll just divert that money um, to other projects and programs um, 
one of which <laughs> to bring it back around to again always our favorite topic is the bathrooms so any money that we would say we would like to put towards um, opening up the washrooms we've been in conversation with station on the green and with amanda and terry and we think that we have a viable working plan if um if everybody's able to uh, do what they say they're going to do so that might be something that you'll see back at council um but that looks really great the washrooms do continue to be a number one concern for our members um, and we'll be very pleased if we can open up a public washroom safely. Um, the other thing that continues to um, be a question that we would love a, an answer to is our holiday holiday decor. This is something that Mara and Lori have worked on for a long time um, and we have some limitations. We would like to put some money there and we'd like to continue to talk to the municipality about how we're going to do that. But just generally from this slide and the streetscape is we are going to make the street as beautiful as possible so that just being on it feels like it's something special to enjoy. Okay, Kayla, next slide. Okay, so I'm going to walk us through a bit of our marketing programs because as you know, as we're not able to do events, we are switching gears and doing more and more digital marketing. Um, some of the marketing that we were very successful with um, this year already was our Valentine's Day Share the Love campaign, where each of the businesses contributed some photos and links to their website or to their Facebook or to their stores or restaurants. And we were able to do a lot of online sales. So in that, we're going to continue to do some of that and um, promote our businesses online, give them an ability to sell, whether it's uh, takeaway or takeout from the restaurants or, um, you know, curated gift, gift packages or gift ideas um, for Mother's Day. So we think that's our next big um, selling opportunity. And so we're hoping to really support the businesses in that way by doing it in a digital way. In addition, we're also going to be spending some time and effort in organizing some spring um, digital campaigns. You know, video is the way to go. We've already engaged with a student who is helping us to um, create some short videos that you know highlight some of the businesses in the downtown and give you a bit of the experience of what it is like inside the business, even though you can't go in right now. So we'll be doing that and promoting those on Instagram as well. Lavender Days is something that, um, is going to be, again, sort of a passive event, I guess, if you wanna call it that. Um, it's not an event per se, but it's something that's going to take place over three weeks that the BIA has sort of worked in collaboration with a local agri-farm business called Purple Hills Lavender Farm. And they've been super proactive in talking to us a little bit more about some of the tourism that they attract. And we're very excited to work with them in, the, in, in Creemore, in the downtown, in helping to extend the visit of some of the um, folks that come out to their farm to see their farm in the summer. It's really during the peak bloom period, which is sort of the end of June and the beginning of July. So we Obviously, dates can kind of change depending on weather and depending on, um, you know, the harvest, but uh, we're, we're sort of aiming for around June 25th to July 16th. So the idea is that during that time, we will be creating um, window decor, we're going to encourage the businesses to create or to put something in their windows that might be lavender colored or have a lavender theme to it, whether it's a dish or maybe a specialty tea or, or coffee or drink or something like that. So each business we're hoping will contribute something. And also um, that it's just gonna be a beautiful experience downtown. We're including um, lavender in our planters this year and focusing on some flowers that will also be in the purple colors. Like Sarah said, we're going to be adding some Muskoka chairs in lavender color. So we're hoping that once they visit, you know, the region and they have an enjoyable time there that they really like to extend their visit, come down. We're hoping that they'll stay for lunch or dinner and then maybe shop around town. We really see it as an opportunity to bring some visitors into our town. And part of that, we're also um, working on some beautiful artwork that we will include on a rack card that we will give out at the Lavender Farm where they can, and all the Lavender Farms in town, where, or sorry, within the township. And they'll be able to give out rack cards that just tell them about what Creamore is, what they can expect to hear, you know, and just sort of some, some of the um, businesses will be listed as well. So it's, again, just a sort of an educational piece to invite people into town. Um, we're looking at some print ads as well, but generally that's, that's really our big promotion for the summer is to really uh, 
extend the visit for people and to invite them into our town if it is safe to do so and if if it's uh if we we are allowed to in fact do that so that's on our plans at the moment for lavender and if you don't mind just moving forward thank you um, summer sidewalk sales are something else, again, that we're going to look at, but we're waiting to see about how the zoning works out within the Ontario government. If we move into green zones, then we feel more confident doing that. Um, in October, we'd really love to do something around the Thanksgiving, but again, we don't have anything on the books because we just don't know. So it's not worth putting a lot of time and effort into planning until we have a better idea of what we can do. Um, November and December, again, we have our typical, our holiday campaigns, the Chris, uh, Christmas in the Valley, which is typically the Cremor, uh, the Cremor uh, promotion and the Santa Claus parade, which is near and dear to all of our hearts. But um, we just don't know what's what it's gonna look like, but we are putting some budget aside for the Santa Claus parade, because if in fact we are able to have one, we think it should be a really fantastic parade. Okay, so if you don't mind moving forward. All right, so just to, just to continue on with the marketing, um, some of the things, like I said, we're just shifting some of our money from events this year to actually online campaigns. And so that's where we see ourselves, um, you know, doing, doing these kinds of campaigns. Sometimes we have to hire um, somebody to help us with our website and putting up all these packages. We are, you know, hiring a student to help us with some of our Instagram. So, you know, various different things, a photographer, so these are the kinds of things that we're doing this year that will help to promote the businesses without having our traditional events. Um, some print, social media. Again, our website last year, we spent all the time and money creating it. So now it is created. The $700 is simply to maintain it and to host it and um, just make some, some, some minor changes. We've put some budget aside again, like I said, for the holiday campaign and the Santa Claus parade. In addition, we also purchased the Santa float this year, which um, which we needed to, which was a sort of an important asset within the community. So we did purchase it, and we now own it. Um, signs; those are our Todd signs that are all along the the road. Those green signs that we have a contract for. So basically, that sort of sums up a lot of our sort of promotion this year in terms of events. But you can think of them as online events as opposed to the traditional events that you're used to seeing in Cremor. Okay, so if you don't mind moving forward. Okay, so I'm gonna hand this off to Sarah in a minute. Part of our um, long-term planning always is something we have to really be concerned about with the BIA and that's, uh, you know, it's been great this year. We've already had a couple of fantastic meetings with Terry and Amanda and I've had a meeting with Dan as well. So we're just sort of meeting with a lot of the heads of department right now to really understand, you know, how we can plan for the future and, and review what we're doing so that we're all on board and we're all collaborating a lot more than, than we ever have, which is fantastic. And we appreciate that. Um, we're looking for resources for grants, funding and sponsorships. Um, something else that we're working with is the partnership with the Creamore Community Foundation. Um, they are still on track to hire a program manager for the Village Green. And we're hoping that we'll be able to collaborate with that person and that person might be able to give us some assistance as well in the future for events and things like that. And the levy, the challenge to be sustainable with our $20,000 levy. So that is where I'm gonna leave it here. And I'm gonna ask Sarah to, to join me and take the next section. Sarah, over to you. Thank you, Laurie. So the levy conversation is an important one. As Lori said earlier, the BIA levy has remained the same for as long as anybody can remember. It's always a touchy topic. Nobody wants to be the person that increases the uh, tax burden on our rate payers, but we feel that the BIA has provided an enormous amount of uh, service to the community. And we also see the costs going up and up year after year, along with the expectations of our members. So we have to be mindful of that. And working with our members, we need to kind of create um, understanding and awareness of the role of the BIA and also what role the, the community wants us to play. 
obviously, uh, if they don't want us to do a lot of work, it won't cost a lot of money. But if we are valuable to them and um, they feel like the BIA is money well spent, then we will want to push that levy up a little bit. So we've begun a process to try and engage our membership as well as understand how to do a levy review um, because that's not something that we've done. So uh, love the lovely but um, Pam Fettis helped us kind of in the beginning get our bearings about how to start this process. Um, and we look forward to continuing this with uh, the next clerk. We've also been talking to Kelly McDonald and she's helped us understand um, what this looks like uh, in terms of applying any levy changes. She's made a recommendation too to talk to Mara to talk a little bit about um, adjusting the uh, boundaries so that we're able to really um, encapsulate all of the different businesses that do uh, see the impact of the BIA and our efforts. So these are all things we're going to do. To date, we have um, put out um, a survey to our membership. From that, what we learned is that many of our members are not that familiar with the levy because they are tenants. They don't know how much they're spending. And so we're working very hard to um, inform them. We'll be working all summer long to kind of get that education piece up. One thing to remember is that ultimately it is the municipality that makes the decision on the levy. When we bring forward our next year's budget, after it's reviewed by our members, you'll be in a position to tell us whether you feel that that levy, which will appear on our budget, is appropriate. So in other municipalities we've looked at, they've sometimes even doubled the levy in a year and council ultimately gets to decide if that works. So we need to know what your feeling is um, and what you feel the role of the BIA is uh, and how we're going to fund ourselves. Currently, we've been very lucky. We've received uh, huge donations from the brewery, which basically double our budget, but we need to be prepared for that to change. And we also need to uh, make sure that we have the resources we need. Currently, we rely 100% on volunteers with the odd job pushed out to, um, to professionals, but we're finding as the expectations of our members increase and just the expectation of the public in general increases, it's harder and harder to maintain the level of service we feel is appropriate. So that's where a levy review uh, is really required. Um, we will do this hand in hand with our members. We do not want anybody to be upset by the fees that we put forward. Um, and we do want to offer the best service for the best cost to everybody. That's how we, I, we're business owners too, we have to pay the levy. So we're both our customer and our service provider. So we've got that in our head um, both ways. It is a bit of a process, especially for volunteers. So we will be leaning on some of your staff to help us through this process. But uh, some of us on the board like these kind of administrative jobs, that would be me. And so I really look forward to undertaking this with the idea that this will all be reflected in our next year's budget. So do be prepared to see our levy increase um, somewhat in uh, for 2022. That is provided our members are in agreement. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah, did you want to just finish us off on the last slide as well, just summarize yeah. where we are on the budget? Yeah, so this budget uh, for this year is basically a zero sum game with us spending our levy of uh, $20,000 plus our $15,000 um, donation that we've received already from Cremore Springs Brewery. So um, the beautification, uh, is important, the marketing and events, our basic admin, and then just a contingency plan, which at this point looks like it might go towards uh, opening of the washrooms, gets us to what we'll be spending this year, which is $35,000. Um, the money is really just a small portion of what makes the BIA work. I can't express enough how important the volunteers that sit on our board and support our board are. And we are so appreciative when, when council and staff stands behind us and helps us because um, this job has become more, I think, than many volunteers uh, 
are able to do and um, without professional help. So again, we just, we can't express enough how much we thank your staff and uh, all of the contributions they make so that we can uh, do the work we have to do. Thank you, Sarah. Um, that's really the last slide. Like I said, it's an abbreviated AGM presentation, um, just the highlights. If you have any questions, I believe in your package, there should also be our budget um, in paper format, or you may have it in digital format, uh, sort of the more sort of detailed budget if you wanna see all the nitty gritty stuff. And this was just sort of a high level budget for you to appreciate and to look over, but we'll take any questions to Sarah or I, if you have any. Great, thank you very much for your presentation. This is uh, the second time that I've seen it and it's excellent, good job. Uh, I'll ask if there's any members of council that have any questions to our BIA representatives here tonight. Mr. Lamers, go ahead. Thank you, Worship. Yeah, you were talking about the levies. Are they is it based on uh, the land owners or the tenants? Yep. Go so, right ahead, Sarah. Okay, so the way the levy the levy is collected by the the municipality as part of your the annual tax bill on uh, the owner's tax bill, and then a portion or the entire part of that is passed on to the tenant uh, through their rental. So both members, um, businesses, which are tenants and the owners of the buildings are members of the BIA. Very good. Is there any other questions to our BIA representatives? Mr. McKechnie, who's also our representative on the BIA. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So, uh, Lori and Sarah, uh, uh, I was at the meeting there when you presented the uh, the AGM there, and uh, you were talking about the Muskoka chairs and, and such, and I, I think that's a great idea. I like the idea of the lavender theme and such. Um, so, you've got, what, $1,200 uh, budget for Muskoka chairs, so I'm thinking, like, is that about 10 chairs? Uh, just, uh, I, I, I think it's a, it's a really good idea because, uh, I, as I mentioned to you at the AGM there, with this COVID-19 and people aren't able to eat in the restaurants, so people are taking the, the food out and they're eating on the street. And what's happening then is that a number of the people are sitting in the doorways of some of the businesses, you know, while they're eating their, their, their meal and then other people can't actually get into that business or whatever. So, uh, I, yeah, and I found that myself. I was down there with my family uh, last fall and uh, there was nowhere to sit. And uh, we ended up going to Cash Town Corners for, for a bite to eat for a hamburger at Cash Town Corners because there was just nowhere, nowhere to sit in uh, downtown Creamore. So I think that's a, that's a great idea. What's the game plan uh, with those uh, Muskoka chairs? Are you going to sell those afterwards or are you going to just uh, keep them in storage and use them year after year? Lori or uh, Sarah, what's the idea there? I think either of us can answer. Um... You know, we're, we're planning that, you know, we could keep them. We, we have a, a plan right now that we might auction them off and sell them to members or to members of the community that might want them. Um, they're going to be wooden. So they're wooden and they're purchased from a local business here in town. So we are supporting our local businesses. And we kind of want to just see the, the shape that they're in at the end of the year as well. I think that will dictate whether we keep them or whether we auction them off, sell them off, um, you know, that we, we are looking for opportunities to store them in Creamore if we do decide to winter, winter them and bring them out next year. Um, it's the first year we've done it. So I know Dan and I had a meeting last week too about the placement of all the chairs. Sarah and I have created a map about where all the chairs are going. They're going in pairs up and down the street. There are 10, you're correct, Doug. Um, Sarah, did you have anything to add about the chairs? No, um, we do have some ideas about storage if we do um, hold on to them, whether it be at the log cabin uh, or a few other places, um, and we'll approach those volunteers to see if that works for them. Perfect. It's okay. a great, great thank you. Look forward to that, and uh, I concur with what Councillor McKechnie says about having a place to sit uh, once you enjoy downtown Creamore. It's a good idea. Any other members? I have a question myself, but I'm looking for any other members. Does anybody else? All right, actually, if I, if I can, I'd like to call upon Terry Vashon, who's our recreation director. I know that Terry has been working with uh, 
Here's Terry. Hi, Terry. Uh, I know that he's been working with uh, with the BIA on uh, on a lot of projects and through his staff, uh, Amanda Murray, who's an amazing resource, as we all know. So, Terry, early in the presentation that uh, Lori mentioned was about the uh, to be determined watering maintenance, perhaps an agreement with us. Is there anything that you could comment on uh, about perhaps creating an agreement or uh, creating a working arrangement? to provide some services for the BIA? Is that something we could do during this pandemic? Yes, for sure. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Measures. Um, yeah, so this year, um, Council again supported the uh, addition of our seasonal beautification staff. Yes. Um, and we have, uh, a couple of years ago, purchased that beautiful custom-made water, water trailer. Um, so this year, uh, we're planning on using um, those two beautiful, excuse me, two beautification staff to uh, water the uh, the new planters. Uh, the big difference this year, Your Worship and Council, is uh, there's some very smart people out there that went and purchased some beautiful planters. Uh, and these planters, um, they, um, our understanding is that they have a water reservoir in them and every, depending on the weather, they usually last five to seven days. And that means that we can uh, get away with watering uh, or filling up these reservoirs uh, once a week. Uh, so that's that's um, that's a no-brainer for us. That's a that's an easy one, uh, much easier than having to go down every day and water uh, plants. Uh, so this new setup is fantastic. Um, there's about 40 planters, I think, in uh, Creamore, and I think there's an, another 20, 25 that's going to be going down downtown Stainer as well. Um, so we anticipate our beautification staff spending pretty much a full day just watering uh, or filling up these water reservoirs. So. Uh, it really works with our timelines, and we're, we're pretty happy to be able to do this service for the BIA. Well, that's great to hear, Terry. I'm glad because, uh, yes, the water or the planters were really successful last year. Uh, Sarah, wasn't one of your volunteers uh, responsible for sort of planting those last year? And it really blossomed quite well in the street, didn't they? So Nancy Johnston was our street person last year. She worked with different service providers to bring us the planters that we had. And uh, we also worked in conjunction with the Horticultural Society and many of their volunteers helped us. So it is the effort of the volunteers that brings that to, to life. And we're excited to see it happen again this year with the help of Heidi um, at uh, Rural Roots. We will be, we will be uh, planting these again with our, our lovely lavender theme. So we're very excited and we just are so grateful for the support from uh, the municipality in terms of buying more practical planters that do allow us to utilize municipal services in a way that makes sense for everyone. Perfect. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing more from Terry and his team uh, as this progresses. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Terry, for joining us for a minute here. Appreciate you jumping in. Okay, any other members? All right, uh, Lori and Sarah, have you got anything else you'd like to add? All right. Uh, you okay, Lori? Yeah, I just I I wasn't sure on the process here whether there whether we need to have an approval of the budget. Sorry, that's well, just um, we'll we'll put that up for the uh, for the clerk to uh, bring to us at a future meeting, and uh, we'll we'll determine that. How's that? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Laura, th uh, Lori, and thank you, Sarah, for joining us and uh, keep up the great work. And also, thank you to Councilor McKechnie for keeping us up to date on activities at the BIA as well. All right. Have a good after or evening. You don't have to stay, but you're welcome to stay and, and join us. We have another deputation coming right up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Council, well, that was very interesting and, and I'm glad we had that in front of us. Uh, now we're gonna move to 5.2. Melissa Twist is here. She's from the uh, South Georgia Bay Tourism Association. I think there she is. She's already popped up on our screen. Nice to see you. Uh, so you've got a presentation for us as well uh, about tourism, so that's always interesting. Uh, Melissa, welcome. Yes, thank you. All right. Do you have a, there you go. You're going to share your screen and we'll get you underway here right away. Awesome. Thanks. Melissa. Welcome. Great. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you about South Georgia Bay Tourism. My name is Melissa and I am the Director of Regional Tourism for South Georgia Bay Tourism. Next slide. Our organizational role, South Georgian Bay Tourism is an in-destination education organization whose role is to enhance the visitor experience through seamless connection between visitors and unique products and experiences. Next slide. 
Our brand promise is to gently nudge and guide visitors within the region to seize their day by discovering unique places, activities, experiences, and people. South Georgian Bay Tourism will perform these functions by coordinating regional visitor services digitally and in person, creating in-destination content and fulfillment, developing routes, best ofs, and top tens by bundling niche experiences, and leveraging partnership with the business community. Next slide. SGBT developed a recovery and resiliency plan in 2020 to help support the local tourism community that was separated into three phases with four main pillars. Safety, protocol, and education, providing local businesses with information necessary to provide a follow, properly follow government regulations, leadership and consistent messaging, acting as a leader for South Georgian Bay and bringing people together to use consistent messaging in order to give clear information with the public, marketing, focusing on inbound marketing to ensure people feel safe when they're in the community, giving them things that they can see at each stage to ensure they're following government rules, and ambassadors, using local businesses and members of the community to help promote the area through social media. SGBT was able to leverage the $7,000 for the Recovery and Resiliency uh, Plan with the TIO grant and also RTO7 funding and a Google Ad grant to over 100,000. SGBT immediately responded to support local tourism business regardless of membership. We have worked on several different marketing initiatives such as ambassador staff, Feast on Great Taste of Ontario, video marketing, digital campaigns through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and working with influencers and bloggers and also radio. Next slide. Here's a snapshot of um, an influencer that we worked with Hopscotch the Globe, they were able to write a nice piece on a day in South Georgian Bay where they featured some great retail spots in downtown Creemore, as well as uh, lunch, uh, their lunch spot, which is the Bank Cafe in Creemore. Next slide. Here's another ex uh, example of a campaign that we worked on, Live Like a Local, where it was very playful and getting our locals to go out and explore their own backyard. Next slide. Here's examples of our local secrets, which is our weekly blog. So here's just three examples. Skip the lineups, eat independent, which was all about eating independently at eateries in Stainer. Discover Clearview this winter and Taste of Clearview, where we did a feature on the Taste of Clearview campaign. Next slide. This was our new normal campaign. It was a digital marketing campaign in partnership with the RTO7. In total, the campaign served over 400,000 impressions, generating over 4,000 clicks for an, over -click, an overview click through rate of 1.7. Uh, we reached a total of over 100,000 video views with an impression, uh, impressive view, uh, view through rate of 28.8. The ad performance, unsurprisingly, all three of our top performing ads were part of a family ad set. The strongest performing ad in the campaign was how to support question, generating over 100,000 impressions. Next slide. The key messaging is that even though we provide sophisticated digital marketing initiatives, we still have feet on the street to respond to direct inquiry at key tourist attractions. So here are some images of our pop-up ambassador location. Next slide. And we also have our Creemore, um, we also have our Clearview Township um, ambassador locations through Creemore Springs, Duntroon Highlands, and the Clearview Tourism Center. Next slide. So 2021 recovery and resiliency continued. So we'll continue to do our Google Ad uh, AdWord campaigns. These are year round campaigns to include road trips, four seasons destinations, and fall experiences. Our content marketing, again, which is year round, writing and sharing pieces of content, showing content to people based off of their interests. Our video, so continuing to develop great videos um, that we are using progressive storytelling techniques. Photo marketing, uh, photo shoots to enhance our storytelling experiences. 
and our digital marketing program. So content specific ads to highlight the content on our website with the ultimate goal to drive leads to our members profiles. Next slide. South Georgian Bay Tourism was excited to announce complimentary listings for the entire tourism industry in our partnering with municipalities in 2021. The most important for our membership is the complimentary listing. This is the single largest shift from our old model to our new. We announced that we were offering complimentary basic listings to all tourism related businesses within SGB as a pilot for 2021. A radical shift inspired by COVID-19 and the need to help businesses in a new way. We are well positioned to promote and support the tourism sector for as long as the recovery takes. Our information marketing, creating and sharing those local stories and placing all there is to see and do in this region. These will take various forms of unique experiences to the latest top 10 lists. SGBT was also excited to announce the launch of our 2021 Four Seasons Digital Guide. All that great local tourism content that travelers are used to seeing, but in a handy digital form. Next slide. Education. We will lead projects and communication efforts to benefit our membership and stakeholders, which differentiates SGB in the travel market. We were able to host the tourism mini conference and plan on hosting the conference again this year. We have added a dedicated page on our web website to educate tourism related businesses, as well as social platforms so that tourism related businesses can keep up to date with those resources. And last but not least, revenue generation, establishing revenue generation opportunities for organization through content partnership. Next slide. So to go into a little bit more detail about our Four Seasons Digital Guide, visitors will start to see QR codes in high traffic areas around the region so that they can download the guide will be easy for the visitor and help steer them around this amazing region. The Four Seasons Guide is a dynamic platform that provides destination information and travel tools to visitors easily and efficiently. The guide offers a safe environment for visitors to explore the area and provides them with travel options. SGBT wanted to create a guide that was dynamic, user-friendly, and provided interactive content about all the great things there is to do in this Four Seasons destination. Due to the change in travel behaviors, we need to reimagine the guide for the future that is more technology based. You'll also start to see some great content around driving routes, itineraries, and open spaces with a focus on how you can support local while participating in these activities. SGBT is pleased to announce the launch of its newest partnership aimed at helping empower its locals and visitors with safe tourism while enhancing their exploration experience with the Driftscape app, a Canada-based tourism app company. With over 20 South Georgian Bay highlights currently mapped out on Driftscape app and more to come, locals and visitors at the Bay will now be able to tour, explore and discover the heritage of Collingwood, the quaint villages of the Blue Mountain and Meaford, the sandy shores of Bosega Beach and the rustic charm of Clearview and many other, and it's hidden gems from the contents at your fingertips, a game-changing approach to tourism. We will be launching this on April 15th, so just later on this week. The app will enable our member organizations to create self-guided tours across the local area, um, deliver valuable and real-time information in a way that appeals to visitors and locals the most, while helping them stay safe, safely and conveniently plan their trip even if it's on the go. Notifying visitors about unique local businesses and tourism highlights that surround them as they explore the region. Locals can also couch surf and discover various places um, within and outside the region while on the Driftscape app. And then this slide is just a quick snapshot of the socials that we run. Uh, as mentioned before, we have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as a newsletter that we have over 3000 people that subscribe and our Google ad campaigns, which are year around. Next slide. So that's it for me. I would like to open it up to any questions and thank you. And I look forward to working with everyone in 2021. 
Thank you, Melissa. And thank you for all the work that you do to promote tourism in our entire region. And uh, I'm sure you've got a lot of partners that uh, you work with. So I'm really glad that uh, uh, Clearview is participating as a partner in this. So thank you uh, for the work that you're doing. Members of council, do you have any questions to Melissa or, uh, or actually any of our staff who are also engaged in this great work? Members of council? Yes, Councillor McKechnie and then Broderick. Go ahead, Doug. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, M Melissa, how far south does the uh, South Georgian Bay Tourism Association take in? Is it, does it include Mulmer Township too? Or uh, just wondering how far south you... Yeah, so our five are. partnering municipalities are uh, Wasaka Beach, Clearview Township, Collingwood, the town of Blue Mountains, and the municipality of Newburgh. And that's what we classify as South Georgian Bay. Okay, okay, thank you. Excellent. Uh, uh, Councillor Broderick is next to that. I think I saw Connie Leishman. Did you have your hand up too? Thank you. Okay, good. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I was wondering if you uh, currently work with uh, with any power sports partners. Lisa, not at the moment. Well, we can fix that. Yes. Um, actually, we. Uh, happen to be the host of the largest ATV club in the province. Uh, and our snowmobile uh, trails are quite renowned. Um, uh, plus the, uh, uh, there's various uh, uh, motorcycle clubs as well that uh, do a fair bit of work. Um, I think there's some stuff to work with there. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Leishman is next. Do you have a question, Tony? Yes, thank you. Uh, Melissa, I think it's a shame that you're um, sort of uh, phasing out your printed material because you know, as I know, and I've said this to you more than once, that people come in with that thing in their hand and they talk to us. Now, having said that, I do also know that they go online and as soon as they go online, they go straight to our website, which is wonderful as well, but um, I think it would be advantageous to have a, even a rack card or some kind of printing that could go into the drawers of the hotel rooms, because you know that's what they do when they sit around and they're bored, they'll read things. And yes, they do go on their phone, but they also have um, partners that sometimes don't have a phone and they have to read stuff. So I just encourage that not to phase it out completely right away. Just see how it works first. Anyway, but thank you. I know that your organization does a great job and we appreciate it. And so does the township. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Melissa, you got any comments about uh, maintaining some type of printed materials available? Yes, for sure. So definitely this was in light of COVID-19 and some of the areas where we typically distribute our guide no longer distributing any print material. Um, I'm really hopeful that going into next year that we will do kind of a hybrid model where we will still print, but it'll just be a, a lower number that we will be printing. So I'm hopeful to have print back in uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. I just want to support Councillor Leishman on one comment. Uh, at our recent Economic Development Action Committee meeting, one of our members is an operator of a B&B and uh, commented that uh, as a B&B operator, they're often giving directions to people or telling them where interesting things are. And uh, at Clearview Township, we have the, uh, the map uh, board of our township and, and you can peel it off and you can write on uh, where things are or give people directions on how to get around. Uh, it's a real handy little tool uh, and it does have a lot of information on it. It is also a little out of date because it was last printed in 2019. We didn't print it last year because of, of COVID, same as what you're speaking about, Melissa, but. Uh, uh, just a comment for you that so certainly those that are in the bed and breakfast business, they, uh, you know, because they have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their clients that they, they get that, that need to have a, a little piece of paper to hand them and send them on their way. So uh, anyway, just something for you to think about, Melissa. Yes, I'm hopeful to, we have our four seasons map that we just actually did a redesign on in 2019. And I'm really hopeful to bring that back in 2022 because yes, to your point, it's a very, very popular uh, yeah. print publication for the association. 
Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How the maps are such a big deal and yet everybody relies on their technology for a GPS. But when you actually have a piece of map in your hand, there's confidence in that for some reason. So there you go. Anyway, uh, anybody else with any questions or comments for Melissa as part of this presentation? Oh, Councillor McKechnie. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Walker, you were on my list. Go ahead, Bob, and then back to Jeff. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to Melissa, um, you talk about the driving routes, you talk about your Driftscape app. Is that primarily to do with walking trails uh, within the uh, Niagara Escarpment? Um, and if it is, is there on the Driftscape app two things? Uh, safety procedures, uh, safety protocol for people that are walking, as well as some type of identification um, mapping or whatever to tell them where they are. I know our fire departments have had numerous calls to assist in trying to find and locate somebody on the walking trails. And it would be nice that a, if safety measures where safety protocol was put there for people to, uh, to read and look at while they're going through their uh, drift game app and also some identifying markers or something to tell them where they are if they need help. Yeah, so there definitely is um, key messaging about safety, but most of the tours are driving tours um, and they're not in, um, in, the, in the hiking trails. It's mostly around attractions in our downtowns and uh, supporting businesses within the area and a cidery tour and a brewery tour and that sort of thing. But that is very important when we work with Trip Cape, that it's, it's very clear in terms of um, safety and what is available and isn't available at the different businesses. Yeah, I just want to support Councillor Walker there. Uh, the fire department in Clearview, as well as the Town of Blue Mountains Fire Department, use an app called What Three Words? Have you heard of that, Melissa? I'm going no. to mark that down, something for you to look up. It's called What yeah. Three Words? And it's a very handy little app for people that are out hiking on trails. Uh, if they get themselves lost, the app will produce three words that then can be given to rescuers or search and rescue people. And those three words will coordinate them on a map. So it's a very handy little tool. You might want to consider taking a look at that. Yes, for sure. Mr. Walker, did you want to have anything further? No, you were, sir. That's good. Thank you. Right on, sir. Thank you. Doug McKechnie, you're up next again. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I, I think my my uh, question was was answered. I was uh, I know down on the Cape Breton uh, uh, they've got the Cabot Trail, and uh, over in Scotland uh, they've got the very 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 successful North Coast 500, which uh, they promoted very well. And as a matter of fact, it's been promoted so well that that they've actually run into a, a problem with the uh, lack of facilities for the for the great numbers of people that are actually traveling those routes. So with regards to the uh, South Georgian Bay, uh, your, your road um, travels or, or uh, uh, what, what are you promoting? Like you, you said, like you've got a cider one or whatever. Have, have you considered doing one? Because uh, I've often thought like we could have the Clearview Mulmer, and that's the reason why I brought Mulmer into this, my last question, the Clearview Mulmer 50 or something like that. Have you thought about actually promoting an actual driving route uh, uh, to the rest of the, uh, you know, to, to the rest of the province, basically? Or, or is that what you're doing just through your, like, cider driving routes and things like that? It, it's just that I, I, I as, a, as a citizen of Clearview, I don't really see a lot of promotion on these driving routes. That's, that's what I'm getting at. And I think they could be done a lot better because they've been very successful in, in other places. So. Interesting. Melissa? Yeah, so with the Driftscape app just launching um, later on this week, we wanted to really focus on regional and our five partnering municipalities right now. But there is, um, we have been in conversations that this is phase one, what will phase two, phase three, phase four looks. And that's definitely stuff that we have discussed about focusing more on those scenic drives, the cycling routes, that sort of great content. So yes, but not right now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, I think we're pretty well wrapped up with councillor questions. I have one quick question for you, Melissa. You mentioned in your presentation about complimentary ads for tourism providers. I think that's an excellent plan. Good job. Um, wondering, are you including sort of operations that are seasonal like apple orchards or maple syrup 
providers, are they included in your list of, of uh, tourism operators? Because they're, they're not open all year round sort of thing. Yes, for sure. We're always uh, open, seasonal, yes. Excellent, thank you very much for that because agriculture is a big deal to us here in Clearview, as you know. So thank you, Melissa. If there's nothing further, uh, members of council, I wanna thank uh, Melissa and our partnership with the South Georgian Bay Tourism to, uh, to continue and thank you for your presentation here tonight. Thank you. All right, have a good evening. Council, we do have one further presentation. I do wanna note it is 6.30, which we do have two scheduled public meetings. I would suspect, however, that the next presentation, who is probably with us right now, we could probably go directly to that and then commence with the two public meetings following. Uh, Madam Clerk, is that sufficient for you? That's perfect. Okay, just wanted to make sure that we're not gonna break any rules here. Yeah, you're All fine. Right. go ahead. All right, so let's bring in our uh, last presentation here underneath the deputations and presentation. Uh, Marcelo Ferrandio, uh, I think he's on board. Marcelo, are you on board? Uh, you had a question or a presentation you want to speak to us about something on Nelson Street? Hi there, can you all hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. I don't see you. I can hear you though, go ahead. Oh, that's weird. Um, I see, I see where my name is and my camera is definitely working. I can see it on the, oh, there we go. Maybe it's coming. Uh, there you there are. Is. Hey, Marcelo. Nice to see you. Hi, everybody. Good. Hope you want to make a presentation to us tonight, so I'll leave the floor to you. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't sure if, uh, sorry, is, is Tom in right now? Mr. Patterson's right here, yeah. Oh, hey, Tom. How's it going? Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Should I start with just a little bit about myself, or should I start with... Um, the proposal or what's what uh I'll, I'll just i'll just share a bit about myself i'll, I'll just begin uh basically um yeah so I, i've lived in worked in creamore for about 11 years um i've owned my house here on nelson street for six years now um i mean basically the, uh, the reason I, i'm coming to you today is I'm, I'm just looking to basically sever my double lot um so um I, yeah like last year i proposed my girlfriend um who was my now fiance. I plan on staying in Creamore. Uh, I, I'm so excited to just, you know, make this my life. Um, I never really had the opportunity to update my home's interior or anything until now, just because of this. But I mean, because of the state of the housing market, um, I, I, you know, I just feel like, um, yeah, basically, what was I going to say here? Uh, but yeah, like, I understand that right now, there are difficulties with um, not wanting to put strain on the town's uh, water and sewer system. Um, so my plans are literally just to sever and sell um, this plot of land, basically. Okay, so uh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, so procedurally, you know, when, when a landowner has a, a question about their land and they wanna make some changes, um, you wouldn't normally just come straight to council first. Uh, you would normally go right to the planning department and ask them for their consult. There's right. a pre-consultation process in place that uh, allows property owners to do that, where they can review some of the uh, parameters of our official plan, as well as our zoning bylaw and, uh, and other uh, municipal and, and federal statutes that, that come into play when it comes to land use in the township. So have you had those meetings with our, our staff already, Marcelo? I have, yeah. Yeah, I met, um, I met actually in 2017 for the whole pre-consultation and everything, uh, just to make sure I, I met the requirements. Um, but yeah, I came here today um, just under uh, the advice of, um, of Mr. Patterson, um, just because we figured, you know, I should present it to, uh, to, to you folks. For sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, abs I just to reiterate, I fully respect the, I think it was, I believe it was Mike, I was speaking to the building and planning head. Um, we, we did have some correspondence. Um, but yeah, like, I, I mean, if it is a matter of us covering the cost of getting water and sewer from the road to the property, like we would be willing to use the proceeds of the sale of the lot to do that, if that was the issue, um, like whenever that's good to go, right? Okay, so obviously there's a lot of procedure here to make that come to fruition for you. So as a citizen and a landowner, it's, uh, it's great that you're asking. Um, there is a procedure to follow, and that is to continue to make an application through the department, uh, there's the planning department, and I, I guess you did deal with Mike Ron. Mike's actually responsible for our water water capacity issues, and uh, he's the director of public works. Mike's with us here too. 
Uh, and I appreciate Mike's uh, concern about the uh, Cremor wastewater treatment plant. Um, I'm hoping that you've paid attention to the most recent news about that, that we have some challenges at that facility and we're, uh, we're trying to work them out. Uh, and, and we are fully expected that we're gonna be able to, to expand capacity down there in the coming years. But uh, I, I can appreciate where Mike's concern is there. So uh, Marcello, um, again, I, I think it's appropriate for you. I mean, I'm glad you joined us, but it is appropriate for you to work through staff so that they can bring forward a report. So uh, uh, I think that's where we go. Now I see some cards coming up from our members of council and I see hands from staff. So if I may, I'm gonna go right to Councillor Patterson first since uh, Marcello brought uh, him into the meeting. So uh, Tom, you go right ahead and then I'll uh, defer to some staff. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, there, there has been a history with this and it's not, it's not that um, the planning department and the uh, uh, public works uh, haven't had discussions uh, with Mr. Sparandio. Uh, Marcello has been um, uh, talking. Um, the discussion, I've also had discussions with both Mayor and Mike and um, we, um, we've come to a point where um, I thought it would be an interesting subject to, to bring to council because it is, um, we've, had a, we've got a convergence here of, uh, I think a reasonable, requ reasonable request that we're, we're receiving from a homeowner uh, to sever a lot. Uh, and in normal times, uh, that's not unusual. And there's a practice that the mayor's mentioned that we follow. Um, but we have a, a convergence of uh, a difficulty we're having with our wastewater treatment plant and which is a concern of the township. And, and there is a market, a real estate market in, in uh, our area and in Cremor uh, we've never experienced before. Uh, and so when we have this uh, convergence of um, non-normal, um, sometimes it takes a, a, a moment of reflection to look at our policy. Um, the uh, advice I've given um, uh, to Marcello is to explore the, um, uh, the opportunity to separate, and this would be for council's consideration with staff's advice, um, the act of um, creating a new lot, um, uh, which is all he's asking for, and um, from the actual development of the lot. Uh, once he sells the property, um, he's no longer interested in the development side of it, the building permits, uh, in other words, uh, servicing. From my point of view, my discussions here, and I think we would all agree in normal times, uh, what he's proposing uh, is, is a pretty standard thing uh, we do here in Creemore, and I think it's something we, we encourage, and that's infill. Um, and in this case, on Nelson Street, um, the, what, what he's proposing to do um, uh, is, um, is conforming to our zoning, conforming with our lot pattern, and it's in, it's in uh, it doesn't have any oddity re with respect to the water services. Again, that's a development issue that the buyer of the property, if uh, their opportunity is given, uh, to, uh, to consider in the future. So I'm, uh, I uh, am supportive of uh, Marcello actually putting an, an application in um, to the Committee of Adjustment uh, for consent. Okay, and, um, and but I do uh, respect the fact that uh, both uh, Mara and Mike feel that this is premature. So um, I'm, I I'm conscious too of the fact that we have a 6.30 um, meeting coming up. Okay. So what I, having made that introduction, I would very much like to have more of a discussion on this. Uh, and I would be happy to bring this up under new business later on this afternoon, this evening, if that's a better time to do it. I just, just want to get a check here on the time check, how much effort we want to put into the discussion right now, because I think there's a few things we need to say. Well, um, if I can, uh, certainly I want to hear from the staff. I saw the deputy mayor put his card up as well. So, uh, Councillor Patterson, the, uh, Obviously, you're correct. There is a procedure to go through. Uh, this council then receives a, a report. Uh, sometimes there'd be, uh, you know, engineering questions brought in, which has to do with what Mike was concerned about, obviously. So there's a lot, uh, a lot more to it than just council making a decision here on the surface. We have to be consistent 
across our decision making for all of our property owners. And uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much further we can even discuss it without actually getting. And I, I see your card. I'm going to go to Mara next. She's up next, just so she knows. Uh, <laughs> we're going to, uh, you know, ha ha there is procedure to follow, and I appreciate what you're saying. And it is unusual times for sure. So we uh, we have to balance all those things, uh, you know, at this time. Uh, Mara, what's your comment on this, and uh, can you give any advice to the landowner at this time? Thank you, Mayor Measures. Um, I just want to say that we have been consistent across both Stainer and Creemore, given that we don't have uh, water capacity in Stainer and we don't have sewer capacity in Creemore, that we have not entertained any severance applications or any rezoning applications for that matter to increase the use of a property that would affect the sewage and water capacity. So, you know, I certainly appreciate the applicant's uh, desires. Um, however, it's, it would be premature for us. We have no water capacity in Cremore and Mr. Sporandio, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, or sorry, did I say water? I meant sewage capacity. Um, is, he's not the only person that has approached the planning department or the public works department to do uh, some sort of intensification in the township uh, or in Cremore or Stainer that we haven't been able to um, provide for. And, you know, I've been a planner for 30 years and uh, with severances, you have one year to fulfill all of the conditions, uh, and the conditions are typically that you install the sewer and water laterals before you get a consent uh, certificate of approval. And uh, so the property wouldn't be able to be sold without that sewer and water being put in. And once the sewer and water laterals are put, laterals are put in, then the applicant would have a right basically to uh, obtaining the building permit. <clears throat> so that would be something that would absorb all of the other applicants who have come forward to us who've wanted to do the same thing. Um, additionally, we may have concerns with people who've been in the door be earlier and had approvals before we were even aware that we had a water capacity issue or a sewage capacity issue in Cremore. And um, we will be likely going to them uh, to help us uh, obtain additional capacity. And Mike may be able to speak to that further, but essentially, um, you know, we wouldn't want to upsert that process. Uh, and uh, we, we definitely need to be consistent in our approach. We simply do not have the servicing available to create the lot. And that is a requirement of our official plan and the provincial policy. And I think it would be a, a, a substantial risk to the municipality to, to uh, well, really, I, I don't think we would be wise to ask uh, um, or to recommend to someone to make an application that planning staff would then have to suggest to the Committee of Adjustment, because it wouldn't be coming through council, right? It would be going through the Committee of Adjustment that it's premature and shouldn't be approved. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Sporandio would be lost on his application fee and all of the costs that he put up front because he wouldn't be able to meet the terms of the um, Committee of Adjustment, assuming that they agreed with staff. Um, so, you know, he is not alone in his desire to have additional development uh, in, in an area where we do not have capacity. We have a lot of other people who are in that situation. And it could be uh, at, a, at quite a risk to the municipality if we started approving those applications without capacity. All right, thank you, Mira. Uh, I want to recognize the deputy mayor because you've been very persistent, as well as the fact that deputy mayor, you are our representative on the committee of adjustments. So, you have a comment you'd like to put forward, Barry? Well, I, I appreciate what what everybody has said, and, and I certainly appreciate the you know the wisdom that that Mira carries with her years of experience and. Uh, um, I, I think the reality is, you know, we let developers, you know, do plans and, 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 and you know, and, and plan, um, you know, planning, I forget the term, but, uh, you know, uh, plan of subdivisions without them having any servicing available or ready at the moment. I mean, I, I why should we treat an individual any different? I, I would think that you should at least be able to put his application in for severance and uh, let the Committee of Adjustment do their thing, though I recognize that planning would probably not recommend it. 
But uh, I mean, it's no different than anybody else who buys land on speculation. Ever the buyer is would be made aware of that you can't develop here until water becomes available, water and sewer becomes available. But at least at least allow them to benefit what's happening in the real estate market right now. I, you know, that's just my thought. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, my comment, I'll go back to you, Mr. Patterson, in a moment. But uh, my comment on it, too, is that uh, when I looked at this, uh, uh, Mr. Sperandio, when I saw that you were on the agenda, I, I looked at your property and saw that it's currently eligible for multi-use uh, facility because it's, it's a large lot. So there could be a, a, a multi-residential property. I mean, you could literally change the entire development and still already have the connection that you have, and there could be multiple uses on or multiple residentials on that property um, as I see it, but I take the advice from the planning department if that's in, in fact the case. So there are some opportunities for you to consider uh, separate from creating a severance on your entire parcel. So you could consider that something that you might want to consider. Um, Mr. Patterson, you want to speak again? Yeah, just a quick one. So my simple ask is that we allow the uh, uh, with the assistance of the planning department, uh, Mr. Scrandio, uh, in applying for consent. Uh, I, I, I do that too, not, not to sound belligerent or to stand in opposition to the experience in our planning department, but our policy uh, is, and what we have done as a council is delegate that authority uh, to the uh, committee of adjustment. And they have the discretion uh, to make every, in fact, when I read what we say, about our own committee of adjustment, we, we, we basically say that each application is treated uh, on a site-by-site -site basis and on based on unique opportunity. And, and, and I'm pretty sure, and, and Marcello can, can step right up and, in, and, in, and interrupt me and, and tell me if, if I'm wrong here, but he, I know he knows pretty well from, from both Mike and Mara um, what the process is. Uh, he knows what some of the risks are. He's prepared to, to do that uh, in terms of fees. Uh, he's also willing to go before the Committee of Adjustment and explain uh, his, uh, his site's uh, opportunity and, uh, and go through that process. Uh, he knows about the one year, uh, uh, if conditions, if the approval was to be given uh, with conditions before he got the certificate. And he also knows that once he gets a certificate, if he's lucky enough to do that, he would have two years to sell, which is the purpose for uh, having the uh, consent or else it goes into labs. But as he said, he's been working since 2017, putting off his plans. Um, the other thing, and, and, and the mayor, uh, deputy mayor makes a point, which uh, I've, we've, uh, Mike and Mayor and I, have, we've talked about this, is everyone who needs services and can't get it in, uh, waste treatment in Cremor and water in Stainer is at various levels of uh, application, okay? Uh, some have made an application and got some lot subdivision creation, as we know, uh, but, but limited. Uh, right now, there's no lineup for this. There's no priority. Uh, there's no way of processing these kinds of requests. The only way to do that is to get an application into the Committee of Adjustment, which he's attempted to do. And, and, and the good advice of the planning department is that uh, we, we won't, uh, again, Mara, correct me if I'm wrong, now is not the time to make your application. And I guess what I'm asking is, can this be the time he puts in an application and he goes to the uh, one authority that we have uh, delegated uh, this decision-making to, uh, to, to be, be heard. If, if it's necessary, uh, I am prepared to put a motion forward tonight. But if we can just have that general understanding, then, then that's what I'm asking. All right, well, thank you, Councillor Patterson. Before we get excited about any motions right here, um, Mike would like to speak, and then I'd like to go to the CAO as well. So go ahead, Mr. Ron, and then I'd go to your CAO. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so I did, I did talk, it was um, Steve Spraniel, is that brother, father, maybe I, I talked to you a couple of times on the phone? That, that would be my father, yes. Father, okay, so Mary's absolutely right. So her 30 years and my 25, so if 
the community of Adjustable wants to vote against 55 years of senior management experience, that would be disappointing. You know, I've talked, we're waiting on a report from our engineers that's supposed to be here in July. And if it comes out the way we think it will, we're going to have a couple hundred units capacity, in which case, you know, Marcelo can get his lot serviced and severed. There's at least three other lots in Cremor and at least 15 in Stainer. If this goes through and we start serving lots without servicing, I can tell council that 20 years ago when I was became a superintendent, there was lots getting bought and sold without servicing because that was the policy of the day. And they would walk in and get a building permit. We can't track every lot that has a service. This is part of the tracking system. There was lots getting built. There was houses getting built in the middle of January. And all of a sudden, whoa, what do you mean there's no water service to this property? We can't track that. They had to sit until April. Do you know what the township looked like allowing lots to be sold and, and building permits issued for houses with no services? I believe in one case there was, you know, I, I don't even know if a service was available. Like this is part of the process we've put together to protect consumers and, and taxpayers in our township. So um, I, I don't agree with this suggestion whatsoever. And um, I know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Marcelo's here and, and, and listening to this, but you know, we, we do what we do over the phone so that it doesn't come to this, right? Thank you. Matt, I, okay, I appreciate your passion and your and your interest in this. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I'll get to you in a minute. Mr. CAO, Mr. Mr. CAO, um, I'm going to ask you if you would commit to, to work with the senior management and directly with the property owner here, have a discussion about what the potential would be for, for that uh, for that work. And that way we can help uh, the property owner have a bit of a, an, under, uh, an understanding what the future can be for the properties that, uh, that the property owner owns. So Mr. CAO, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, no, I, I'd be happy to uh, go over the history and uh, figure out what the timelines could be. Uh, obviously, we have a resident that wants to sever his property, and we have some protocol here that we have to be careful of because it could attract, from what I'm, my understanding is, some liability. So uh, we have to balance that. And uh, I think people here, I think the staff here would want to see this work out for Mr. Uh, Sp Sprandio, is it? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, but ultimately, we want to work within the parameters of our statutory obligations. So uh, I'd be happy to meet, see what we can do to get some traction on this. But it has to be done in a certain way. Appreciate that, Mr. Ferguson. If you could uh, let us know what's going on with that, that'd be great. Mara, you're next and then the deputy mayor. Go ahead, Mara. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Worship. I just want to say that there is a difference between a severance and a draft plan of subdivision. So with a draft plan of subdivision, there is a restriction on title. It is a conditional approval and that conditional approval, um, the municipality sets the deadline on that. So, you know, typically they would run three to five years and then the municipality has the right to extend that deadline. So the risk to the municipality is substantially less in that case because it's the, there's a restriction on title so that those lots cannot be sold. So they would not, whereas with a severance, the applicant has one year to fulfill all of the conditions, which we do not have capacity for. And secondly, as soon as they get their certificate of consent, they can sell the property to somebody. That is different from a, a draft plan of subdivision. So there is a substantial difference between the two, between the two types of applications. So I just wanted to make that clear for council. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Deputy Mayor, uh, let's wrap this up. Yes, I agree. Let's wrap this up. So thanks, Mayor. Thanks for clarifying that because that really that really helps. And so um, I believe I heard Mike say that um, we're hoping to have a report in July that uh, uh, could hopefully uh, um, make some water and, and water and sewer service available in Cremar. Is that correct, Mike? That's we're waiting for this report and it would become and would come in. You're hoping to have it in July. Is that correct? Uh so, Deputy Mayor, the, the Blue Sky report that came last October laid out a schedule. That, that report suggested we had membranes installed by the end of March and three months to monitor the plants. Those membranes took 12 weeks to order, so we're a month behind. So, um, August, we should know how much capacity we have available for sewer, and there's enough water capacity. So, if the sewer capacity is there for a few lots, 
then it's, we'll, you know, come pay the money and we'll put the service in. So that's what we're, we're hoping for. I just that's, can't. That's, that's what it sounds like. It, it sounds like you need to wait a couple more months to, uh, so I, I, I'm su suggesting to Marcella, though I appreciate how you would like to get your severance and get the things sold, and then um, I, I am prepared to wait till we get this report because it makes more sense to, you know, to, to for at least he has a, a true idea of whether he's going to be able to service the lot or not. And if it's a matter of a couple of months, if it's going to be a year or two, that might be a different story, but one more. A couple of months away, where hopefully we're going to have some some uh, sewer capability available, then then it's probably. I know I know we can all get impatient, Marcelo, but uh, I I think that. Mr. Uh, Marcelo, I'll give you the floor, and then for we'll wrap it up. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yes, thank you so much. I know we're supposed to wrap this up, but um, I absolutely appreciate the um, the two three month thing. Um, the only reason I'm coming here to you today is that uh, we were told in April of 2020, um, also by Mike, that it would be only about two months to proceed. Uh, that, again, that was a year ago. So that's the only reason. Otherwise, I can absolutely appreciate uh, having to wait a few months. That is no problem to me. But yeah, I, I just thought I'd make that clear as well. I appreciate that. Sometimes engineering questions, we don't have control of those things. I appreciate that too. Um, Mike, go ahead. So I just want to clarify because, um, you know, I did... Uh, correspondence with August 2020 and I did tell Marcelo that you know within a month or two we would have an answer well the the answer was the blue sky report which laid out the timeline that brings us to September of this year there we go all right so uh I think the resolution for this at this time will be that our CIO Ferguson will meet with our staff and the property owner of a discussion uh come come to some uh, understanding about what the procedures could be and uh, from there, we'll, uh, we'll get a report back from the CAO and or uh, Mara Burton from her department. All right. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. And I appreciate that. It's, like I said, it's a little unusual, but uh, I think it was a good discussion. And I thank you very much for coming and bringing it to council. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Marcel. All right, council. Thank you. We are a little bit behind. Uh, it's just before seven o'clock. So we're just under the wire as far as our public meetings. Uh, I'm going to turn the meeting over to the deputy mayor, who will then conduct uh, our two public meetings, which is our procedure here at Cleary Township Council. So, deputy mayor, I'll uh, give you item six, six point one, and six point two. Deputy mayor has a chair. And your microphone's dead. Try it again, there, Barry. Sorry. I was just so excited to get started with my <laughs> public meeting. Okay, we will now initiate the public meeting portion of tonight's agenda. We thank everyone who provided written comments ahead of tonight's public meeting. If you wish to be notified of the decision of the Corporation of the Township of Clearview on an application being discussed this evening, please contact the planning person in charge of the file. The information will be provided in this presentation. As identified in the notice of public meeting, please be advised that your written comments or request to be notified will form part of the public record. Your communication and any personal information therein will be made available to the public unless you expressly request its removal. If a person or public body does not make a submission to the township with respect to the proposed applications before a decision is made or a bylaw is passed, they are not entitled to appeal the decision of the local appeal tribunal and may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal unless, in the opinion of the board, there are reasonable grounds to do so. The following public meeting will involve a brief presentation by our planning staff, including a brief explanation of the written comments received and opportunity for the applicant or their agent to present their application and respond to the written comments and an opportunity for questions by council. We will now proceed with our first item, which is uh, the public meeting regarding telecommunication tower, uh, file number 2021-012. And I believe Mr. Ainley is uh, looking after this file and it's up to your floor is yours, Mr. Ainley. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just like to share my screen. Bear with me, please. Uh, 
Is everyone able to see my presentation? Yep. Excellent. Um, okay, so my name is Nick Ainley. I'm a planner here at the Township of Clearview and here tonight to facilitate the public meeting uh, for our application 2021-012, which is for a proposed telecommunication tower to be located at 6319 Highway 26. So in terms of the proposal itself, um, the, on behalf of ExploreNet Communications, the Forbes Brothers Inc., which is the applicant, is proposing to install a 45 meter self-supported steel lattice tower on the subject site. Um, the tower would be, a, would be able to uh, hold multi-carrier um, towers in the future or be a multi-carrier tower in the future. Um, as indicated, the post tower is located at 6319 Highway 26. Uh, the subject lands themselves encompass an area of approximately 2.5 hectares and are located approximately 2.2 kilometers east of the Sainer Selman area and approximately 1.5 kilometers west of uh, Sunnydale Corners. Um, the tower is intended to be located at the rear of the property, approximately uh, 290 meters from the front property line uh, along Highway 26. So this is a key map of the subject land. So just to kind of orient yourselves here. So this would be Highway 26. Uh, the nearest intersection would be Highway 26 and 3 4 Side Road, Sunnydale. The subject lands themselves are here, hatched out in gray and black uh, hatching. So Stainer would be here to the west, approximately 2.2 kilometers away. And then Sunnydale Corner is approximately 1.5 kilometers uh, to the east. So this is an aerial imagery of the site. So again, Highway 26 is here. The subject lands are hatched out in red. Um, so you can see it's a bit challenging from the resolution, but the subject lands presently support two existing self-storage um, business or structures. There is an existing dwelling located in a property approximately here. Can you guys see my, my cursor? Is that available? Yes, okay. And then there's a barn structure silo and then the post tower is supposed to be located approximately at the rear portion of the site. Um, this is a site plan that was, or concept plan that was provided by the applicant, Forbes Brothers Inc. Um, just kind of showing a depiction of the current property, the existing buildings and the proposed tower location here. Um, so as indicated before, the proposed tower is supposed to be a 45 meter light duty self-supported steel lattice structure. Um, access to the tower itself will be provided via Highway 26 from the existing driveway and extend to the rear of the property. Um, the footprint of the tower is uh, approximately a three by three meter footprint, but I believe it's on a 15 by 15 meter gravel base. Um, there's no buildings proposed at the base of the tower at this time, it'd just be equipment cabinets. And as indicated before, the tower would be available for co-location for other carriers in the future. Uh, so this would be the photo rendering that was provided by the applicants of the proposal. So this is a photo taken, say, if you're on Highway 26, uh, viewing southeast, I believe. Um, so you can see the existing uh, self-storage um, structures. There's existing dwelling here. You can't see the barn hidden by the trees with a silo. And then, so that's what it looked like before. And then afterwards, you would see the, uh, the tower there in the distance as I circled in um, yellow. So in terms of the policy framework, so the subject lands are currently designated as agricultural within the township of Clearview's official plan. And the subject lands are currently zoned as agricultural livestock use exception one or AG-EL-1 zone. And they are also partially regulated by the uh, Nawasaga Valley Conservation Authority. So this is just uh, in terms of official plans, or official plan mapping. So again, the property is hatched out in red with the proposed uh, tower location. All areas in white are designated as agricultural. So you can see the entirety of the property is designated as agricultural. Uh, this would be a zoning map of the site. Again, property hatched out, location of the tower. You can see it's an AG-EL-1 zone. Um, and the blue hatching here is the NBCA regulatory area. So you can see that the proposed structure is actually located outside of that. Uh, those regulatory limits. Um, in terms of notes and circulation, so notes for this public meeting um, for the telecommunication towers has been given in accordance with the township's telecommunication protocol. Uh, this was completed on March 19th, 2021, and it was done via mailing to all properties within 500 meters of the subject lands, and it was also posted in two issues of a local newspaper. Detail, details of the application have been available, uh, made available to public for viewing if they wish to see it, as well as been circulated to relevant commenting agencies for um, review and comment. This is just a circulation map showing which properties were contacted via mail. So you can see the orange is the subject lands with all the tan uh, color properties would be the ones that received um, a mailing notification. 
So how do you get involved with the overall process? So uh, telecommunication towers are federally regulated. Um, so basically Forbes Brother invites, you know, comments and inquiries about this proposal via mail, email or fax. Um, comments should be received by 4.30 p.m. April 22nd. Uh, so there's a little typo here, not April 19th, it'd be April 22nd. So it's a little bit of an extended timeline to, um, to receive comments. So if anyone's out there, that's the timeline that they have. Um, and comments can be made to the township staff, to myself, um, Forbes Brother Inks directly, or to Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, or which was formerly known as Industry Canada. This is the next few slides are just based on the contact information for the applicant, which is Forbes Brothers here, Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada contact, which again is Industry Canada, as well as myself. Um, my presentation is available on the municipal website under the agenda for tonight's council meeting. So if anyone in the public does want this information, I've went through it a bit too quick, just feel free to go online and find it there. In terms of public comments, uh, this would be the part of the night where I would read any comments that were received from the public. Um, so far, as a part of the formal circulation, we have not received any comments um, from public or agencies on this. Uh, we have received two comments from one from the MTO as well as from the NBCA as a part of the pre-consultation process. They both initially indicated that when the tower was originally proposed to be a bit close to the front of the property line, um, that it was within the regulatory limits. Um, since that time, the applicant has proposed to shift the structures to the rear of the site. Um, so, and it's no longer within their uh, regulation areas or within the uh, 45 meter setback in terms of the MTO requirements. So in terms of the overall review process uh, for the telecommunications protocol, so tonight would be the public meeting. Um, following the public meeting, staff will consider all comments that are received to date up until that April 22nd deadline. Following that, staff will bring a recommendation report back to council. Um, and basically, following a decision that's made by council, notice will be given to the applicants what, of whether that decision is. And then any decision will also be forwarded on to Industry Canada for consideration. So that is that concludes my presentation. I believe the applicant is also here and has a brief presentation of, the, of their own. So I'll just stop sharing now and see if um, they are available to, to start there. So I'll hand it back over to the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Um, I, I so the applicant, I believe, is, is with us today. Uh, I believe it's Cyrus. 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 So and I believe you want to do a, a short presentation. Is that correct? Uh, good good evening. Um, I, I actually don't uh, want to do a presentation, but I, I'll, uh, I think Nick did a perfect job. I'll, I'll just be here. If there's questions, I can, uh, I can answer for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Any member of council have any questions? Uh, Your Worship, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> to Nick and to Cyrus, would there be any, oh, hello, Cyrus, sorry, I just saw you pop up on the screen. Um, is, is, there, is there any perceived difficulty if the tower was actually located closer to the road? I mean, I, I found it interesting that the NVCA and the MTO both commented that it was uh, outside of the regulated area of the NVCA, but uh, um, if, the, if the structure was actually located closer to the road, would there be any difficulty with the NVCA, given that the the tower is uh, is not something that is uh, uh, you know impeding in any way in any type of water course or anything like that. Nick, do you have a comment on that? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. So initially, so there's three as a part of the circulation because it is within the MTO. It's off Highway 26. So anything within 45 meters of the property line would require a permit through MTO. Similarly, if it was through the if it was in the MVCA regulatory area, they also require a permit. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it wouldn't be, it would be impacted by it or they wouldn't get a permit from them. It was just simply saying that if you're in here, you require a permit. If you're outside of it, um, you do not. Uh, municipal staff also requested that the, um, we prefer it to be located a bit back in the property to provide a bit more distance in terms of it is more of our entry points to our community. And it's provide a bit more setback and buffering from the, uh, the highway. So it was a request by staff and in doing so, shifting the tower to the back. It just addressed um, having a permit through MTO or through the MBCA. So that's that's the reason for why um, we requested a shift in it and um, Forbes Brother was amenable to that. And uh, Mayor, I believe you got your hand up. Oh, you're muted. Pardon me. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I also just wanted to add to Nick's comments that one of the other things that 
may not be an issue, but we didn't know if it would be an issue if there was ever any ice on the tower and then we had some wind that it would for that that ice uh, could actually be blown off onto the traffic. And so we thought it might be best if it was uh, located as as most of our towers most to probably all of our towers are located further away from roads. So it was just another thing that we thought that might potentially be a problem. Okay. Yeah. Just a supplemental, if I can, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Thank you. The, the um, obviously the telecommunications protocol is uh, you know is something that we follow here at the Township of Clearview, and um, I'm just interested that this particular application is not uh, specific to any type of cellular carrier. It's simply a telecommunications uh, application of which, uh, as our modern society is changing every day, that it's a multiple. Uh, opportunities for telecommunications, not just cellular. So uh, it's interesting to note that this is a, an application that's that's not specifically for a, a cellular tower, that it's for other types of communication as well. So uh, would Cyrus have any comment? Is it is it a cellular use that you're proposing or is it other telecommunication type services that are going to be available on that tower for residents of Clearview? Um, yeah, so uh, ExploreNet is is a uh, wireless broadband um, company, so it, it's it's providing internet services. Um, it's not uh, fixed uh, mobile like a, like a Bell, Telus, or Rogers. We're primarily servicing households that um, have limited access to uh, internet. Um, and and in some cases, it's we're we're providing service in communities where um, either access is limited, it's poor, um, or there just isn't uh, very many choices. So we're putting in some competition as well. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for the answers. And back to Mr. Chair. Councillor Lamers, you had your card up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Where's the next closest tower around this, and what is the radius that uh, you can service? Okay, that that's a that's a good question. Um, let me start with the where closest towers are. Um, we have one approximately ten kilometers uh, due east. Um, there's an, another one um, about eight kilometers south, um, another one um, eight kilometers to the south southwest, and um, one or two more further west, maybe about 17 kilometers away. Um, now, the, the harder question is how, how far, what's the service range of, of these sites? It, it depends um, somewhat on, on terrain, um, obstructions that, that might be in the way, but also on, on the amount of capacity that's on the network. So that's the number of users on the network. The more users you have, um, the, the smaller the footprint or service uh, area of, of each site becomes. So we did originally have coverage in this area. Um, what this site will do is, is shore up that coverage. Um, our, our ideal range to, to service city is, is about eight kilometers or less. Um, theoretically, we can, we can provide service as far as 20 kilometers, but it gets a little bit tricky um, as far as reliability and, um, uh, and data speeds. So the, the site will also do one, one additional thing is I mentioned um, capacity is, is important in these networks. So as we put sites in between our existing network, we're also relieving some of the capacity issues um, from the adjoining site. So uh, it, it improves the service in the surrounding area as well as the, as the immediate area. Uh, hopefully that, that, that answered it. <laughs> Okay, are there, are there any other questions from council or staff? Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Oh, okay, Mr. Ferguson. You, 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 Thank you, you, Deputy Mayor Burton. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm hearing about this basically uh, for the first time and I'm not sure how far along you've 
been in your process, but has NAV Canada been involved as well? We have. We we submit applications to NAV Canada and Transport Canada. That that gives us uh, lets us know, uh, you know, if, if there's any obstruction issues or if there's any lighting that's required. Uh, both NAV and Trans have responded. Uh, there's no issue and uh, no specific lighting is required on this site. So the 45 meter height has been basically approved by NAV Canada for this purpose? Uh, specifically approved by NAV Canada and Transport Canada, yes sir. Thanks. Good, that's the only question I had. Okay, any other, any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, so this concludes the public meeting with respect to tonight's file. We thank all who provided written comments and for their interest in this matter. All input received with regard to this proposal will, will be fully considered by staff in their recommendation and by council in their decision with respect to this application. A report regarding this proposal will be prepared for council who will make a decision concerning this matter at a future date. So that brings this one to an end. And then we have another item for a public meeting. And uh, I'm gonna count on our, our clerk, Brenda. There, there has been recent interest in exploring a bylaw to permit businesses to be open on statutory holidays. A notice of motion was brought forward by Councillor Janine on March 8th. And the motion was passed by council on March 22nd directing staff to hold a public meeting as required under the Retail Business Holiday Act for the purpose of passing the bylaw. There were two comments received, uh, one from the Cremar BIA and Clearview Team of Commerce. And I'm just calling on Brenda, just, just give us a quick, a quick brief on uh, those comments. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, yes, you're correct. Uh, we received uh, a resolution from the Cremar BIA in support of passing a bylaw. And the Clearview Chamber of Commerce, they actually did a survey. Uh, they had a number of questions uh, contained within the survey as well, and that was forwarded to council. At the end of the day, they were, they were in support of passing the bylaw as well. Thank you. Is there anybody on council have any questions regarding this uh, motion that was passed at, uh, in the procedure that we're going through? Any questions? from staff or, or council members? Going once, going twice. Okay, this, uh, this concludes tonight's meeting. I uh, turn the meeting back over to his worship. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Uh, council uh, and Councillor Patterson, I hope you're still there. Um, I'd like to bring forward a, a notice without motion and it's because we had this public meeting um, I'd like to ask for a mover and seconder after I read this motion, if you'll be interested in hearing it. Members of council, uh, resolution be it resolved that uh, council direct staff to prepare a bylaw to allow businesses in the township of Clearview to open on statutory holidays under the Retail Business Holiday Act, with the exception of Christmas Day and New Year's Day. And item two, that the bylaw be brought to the April 26, 2021 meeting for council's approval. Can I have a mover and seconder? <coughs> Councillor Deneen, Councillor Broderick, discussion. Anybody have any discussion items on this? Seeing none. Thank you, council. I will call the motion then. All those in favor? And for the record, we'll show that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And. Uh, we didn't put this on the agenda because we were unsure as to what the input we would have. So we're really happy that council accepted this uh, notice without motion to get council to get or get staff to move ahead on this. So thank you council for that. And uh, through the CAO and through our clerk, we will have this prepared for our meeting on the 26th of April. Thank you. All right, council, uh, we are still, we're at item number seven on our agenda. Go figure, here we are at 7.20. We've got a lot of content yet to get through in this council meeting, so let's get moving. Uh, council, uh, item number seven, approval of the minutes of our council meetings, recommendation be it resolved, that council of the Township of Clearview hereby approve the minutes of March 22nd, 2021, council meeting as presented. And I have a mover and seconder on the motion, please. Deputy Mayor Burton, Councillor Broderick, any questions 
All those in favor? And the minutes carry, thank you very much. Business arising from the minutes, if any, council, anybody? Seeing none, uh, communications from the mayor. Uh, members of council, as I mentioned, we did uh, have an in-camera session. So I will bring us to item 9.1, which is our closed session report. Uh, so I am pleased to report in open session that we have board appointments uh, for the Nottawa Hall Board and for the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Uh, it'll be bylaw number 21-39. It'll be received on desk, which I have right here. So I will read it when we get to bylaws uh, in that portion of the council meeting to appoint. Uh, we have two volunteers that are stepping forward to join those boards. Okay, Council, further from our closed session report, I have a uh, statement to read in regards to public works. Uh, the public works uh, report regarding Highway Number 26 and Mowat Street North. The township has purchased 7132 Highway Number 26 and acquired the road uh, widenings at 7132 Highway 26 and east side of Mowat Street North to accommodate the need for an identified a need that's been identified in the Stainer and Area Transportation Plan that was circulated back in August of 2009. Uh, there is also a public works report on the agenda later in this meeting to establish these lands as a public highway. So council, uh, for the public's sake, we discussed this portion in camera and we're bringing it forward in open session now to discuss uh, naming these little portions of property as public highways, which will part of something that was identified way back in 2009. All right, council. Uh, item number 92 is the census. There's uh, uh, 93 is the NVCA uh, media release from the NVCA. Item number 94 is the Oramadani in regards to support of our motion for the MFIPA. And uh, item number 95, NVCA March 2021 board meeting highlights. Is there anything you'd like to pull from any of these members of council? Uh, Mr. Patterson, go ahead. Uh, thank you. It's um, I, I'll just pull the um, NBCA uh, board meeting highlights. Board meeting highlights, 9-5. Okay. Council, is there anything else? All right. How about we go right to you then, Councillor Patterson? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, just, just a quick uh, note uh, in the permit application process. The board felt um, that we should be uh, responding to um, the various levels of understanding and uh, and concerns for the permitting process. Uh, I can summarize in, uh, uh, in uh, one phrase. Uh, some people just think it's taking too long. Um, so um, the board uh, wants to respect that concern. We have reports that say uh, that we, the, the board members get reports saying that we're doing pretty well. And um, sometimes it doesn't line up with public reception on both sides, the served customers or the uh, board members uh, Perception from the municipalities. So this, this we're hoping, we're, we're, we're going, we're hoping that this work that the staff is doing, willingly, um, uh, uh, will form the basis of uh, a discussion that um, our um, municipalities can take advantage of, and come to the site, come to our municipality, or come to the staff in some form, have a dialogue about how we can align ourselves with uh, with what are some of the issues. Uh, with permitting. So we're all on the same page in terms of uh, performance management, if you want to put it that way. So we we'll look forward uh, to that work. I just wanted to highlight that. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. I'd like to comment on that too. I read that uh, uh, board meeting highlights and I was very encouraged to hear that, uh, that the uh, NVCA staff are meeting uh, deadlines, I guess, and, and, and processing uh, applications in a timely manner. And that's very encouraging. So I look forward to, uh, to hearing more about that from the public as they react to it. Uh, so that's, that's very positive. Thank you, Councillor Patterson, for that. Anything further, Council? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Leishman. Thank you. I was wondering if our current uh, clerk could uh, get in touch with our former clerk and tell her that we have support from Mauro Mondante. Yes. <laughs> I, can I think do that. Yeah, please, Brenda, if you don't mind sending her a little note, if you don't mind. Sure. Thank you very much for that. That's an excellent point. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Uh, any further, Council? All right, I'm going to read the resolution then uh, regarding the, uh, the reports. 
Uh, be it resolved that Council of the Township Theory hereby receive communications from the mayor for information. A mover and seconder, please. Where are we at? Councillor Leishman and Councillor McKechnie. Councillor Leishman, Councillor McKechnie. I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries unanimous. Thank you. All right. Council, let's see. We're at item number 10, which is our county reports for information. Um, we do have a motion in regards to 10.1. So how about I read that and then we'll discuss anything else that's on this. And uh, the deputy mayor and myself would be available to discuss. Council, the county bursary program, uh, we've got a report on this. Council has participated in this in the past. And so I have a resolution from this report and I would hope that uh, you would be interested in supporting it. Be it resolved that Council of the Township Theory hereby participate in the county bursary program in the amount of $1,000 and that it be funded from the Clearview Community Grant Program. I have a mover and second here, and then we'll have discussion. That'd be Councillor Leishman, Deputy Mayor Burton. Any questions uh, of this great program? Seeing none, again, I'll comment. We have participated in this in the past, and I think it's a great program to uh, cooperate with the County of Simcoe. So thank you. Uh, we have a mover and second. I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much. Um, 10.2, 3, and 4. Has anybody got any questions on these? Deputy Mayor, would you like to speak on any of them? I'll just make some, just make some quick comments about uh, uh, the County of Simcoe is, I think they, these are pretty self-explanatory. They're doing a health survey on, on immigrants who, uh, who are now living in our area and finding out if they're having any issues acquiring, uh, you know, health assistance and, and uh, Health programs and stuff like that, and just to make sure there's no um, there's no obstacles getting in their way or that is preventing them from acquiring medical attention when needed. So it's something that's done. Um, they're they're also they hosted the uh, public information on transportation, which ended yesterday, yes. and so it's uh, they were gathering information to deal with the uh, transportation needs. And as you know. The new link system has been a huge success. Uh, prior to COVID was a huge success, was something like 40 or 50% more ridership than what they had anticipated. And then the, the one that really I, I think should be interest to clear of you is the, uh, the 2021 Age Friendly Seniors Housing Grant Program. And it's available for any seniors living in the area if they have to upgrade their home or to make it more accessible, if they have to put in accessible bathtubs or or, you know, put ramps in because now they, you know, they're unable to climb stairs. There is grant money available from the, uh, from the county. So I would urge any of our seniors, or it doesn't have to be seniors, but anybody who's, uh, you know, requiring that, there are grants available to cover those costs. The purpose is to try to keep our seniors in their homes as long as possible and keep them within our communities. So if anybody requires any information on that, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'll put you in contact with the appropriate people. Thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. I did see Councillor Patterson. You had your card up, did you? Yes, go ahead. Is there somebody else just looking? Okay, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, just two quick questions. Uh, on, the, uh, on the Public Information Center for the uh, transportation, I realized there was the residents. Is there a plan um, when, the, when the master plan uh, um, uh, continues uh, in its um, planning stages, I guess, uh, for staff of our township or uh, council and staff putting in um, comments, position papers. What Go ahead, Barry. If you want to take that first. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there. This uh, just because the uh, the consult area ended, they're uh, they're certainly always you know willing to submit information and uh, happy to forward any information information regarding uh, transportation and uh, I believe they've been they have been in touch with some of our staff members regarding I can see Dan just popped up and I believe they have been in touch with members of our staff to uh, uh, to get some ideas on what some of our requirements might be. Okay, let's go right to Dan. Dan have you got a comment on that transportation survey? Yeah, your worship. Uh, just hearing that I just pop in and, and municipal consultation was uh, on Friday this just past Friday. Oh, so Mike, Mike and I, Mike and I attended that uh, on the township behalf. Great. All right, Councillor Patterson, are you comfortable? 
Yeah, I'm comfortable. I'm encouraged. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, just, uh, I was thinking that we, we might have some opinions generated out of our transportation master plan review or uh, comprehensive traffic study coming up. And uh, so, um, I'm, you know, is there, is the staff plan to, uh, to sort of provide us with the input they gave to the county or do we roll that up into perhaps the traffic management, the traffic uh, study? Uh, discussions that we're going to have because some some of the concerns we have is with inter-region inter, inter uh, municipality travel i agree uh dan do you have any comment on that uh it, it was your worship it was very high level um at at the presentation point you know uh, talking about their transportation routing um so some of the issues we're having up in the duntroon area were brought forward to to uh, to the presentation uh, and, and then it talked about uh, transit, transit and um, uh, trails, things like that. that were really high level, high level things. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, thank you. Yes, again, Tom. That's one I might have is just this su slightly subject, different subject with the grant program, which is a great one. Yeah. But it did remind me that we do have a longstanding. Um, um, resolution uh, to have a meeting workshop um, with the social housing so community services group uh, um, to you know to, to discuss uh, with uh, well it used to be with Ge uh, Greg Bishop I, I think it probably still is yes um, and, and I know COVID interfered with it but uh, um, we should be thinking about getting together and doing like that doing something on that even if it has to be in Zoom. Uh, be assured, Councillor Patterson, that has not been forgotten. It's, it's a sticky note right here on my computer that uh, reminds me of it every time I look at my computer. And I have uh, reached out and we have yet to get that scheduled. And in fact, I know the Deputy Mayor can uh, do that as well. So perhaps uh, after our council meeting tomorrow, Barry, I'll make another phone call to the CAO at uh, the county and see if we can stir that up. Thank you. Sound good, Barry? Oh, great. All right. Anybody else? Thank you, Councillor Patterson, for those comments. Mr. McKechnie, no, no, you're in there. I saw you. Yep, nice to see you. <laughs> uh, so is it my turn? Yes, it is. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you said anybody else, and I'm thinking, oh, I forgot me. Well, I'm yeah. looking for anybody else. Anyway, you know, I'm, uh, I'm always looking for the cards, guys. You all know how that works. <laughs> Show me your yellow cards if you want to get in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Your Worship. So uh, the question I have is uh, probably for Dan, if he could pop back in. Uh, uh, so I noticed on the um, uh, county plan there, on their traffic management uh, plan, uh, there was um, a map and it showed the 2728 side road from uh, uh, Highway 26 all the way through to County Road 124. It's recommended that that be a county road. And I'm just wondering, uh, you know, I, I'd heard that uh, a couple of years ago that that was in sort of in the works is, will we see that in my lifetime, Dan, uh, have you had to any uh, conversations at a high level with the uh, county on that? Uh, do, do you think that will happen in the next, you know, number of years, five years, 10 years? It's the ball time right now. Dan, what do you think? Thank you, Your Worship. Through to Councillor McKechnie. Uh, I, I did see that on there. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to, to ask the question on, on timing of that. Um, I suspected that it was a blue dashed line, so I probably won't see it in my lifetime or my children's lifetime, probably. But um, all right, who's what's to say, right? Um, yeah. But it, it, it unfortunately it didn't come up. I did I did see it on the map, but uh, I didn't have a chance to to make a comment on that. All right. Okay. Thanks very much. I won't hold my breath then. So if we don't see it in your lifetime, we're not going to see it in my lifetime. So Fair enough. yeah, sometimes those maps, you know, when the uh, transportation planners, when they think long, long term, they're very, very long term. I mean, I can assure you folks, before I was ever on council, I saw maps that showed the 410 coming out of Brampton, coming right up to Singhampton. And uh, I, yeah. I, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. So <laughs> Anyhow, uh, some of those maps are, are, you know, are wishful thinking, perhaps at best. Okay. Yeah. All right, members of council, thank, thank you. you. All right, uh, council, let's have a uh, uh, 
recommendation to receive the uh, county reports. Uh, unless there's anything further, okay. Uh, be it resolved that Council of the Township they were hereby receive the county reports for information. I'll move over and seconder on the county reports. Where are we at? Councillor Walker and Councillor uh, Deneen. Walker and Deneen. And I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries unanimous. Thank you. All right, Council. Uh, now I'm up here to ward reports. This is where uh, you guys all get an opportunity to, uh, to go around and tell us what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to um, start with uh, Councillor Leishman. You'll be my first, and then we'll go to Councillor Labors right after that. So, Councillor Leishman, you're up first. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I intended a webinar on universal basic income. Um, I don't know whether you've any, it's through the Tamarack Institute. It was really interesting. It's something that I really believe in, um, and I'd really love to see it go, but who knows? We'd have to get all the governments involved in that one. Um, I also in, uh, attended the Dunedin Ottawa Hall meetings, the Southern Georgian Bay uh, Subcommittee on Housing, um, and my husband got his vaccine, so yay. Uh, <laughs> I'd also uh, unfortunately like to say something about a couple of people in our area that have passed lately. One was John Wiggins, um, a real force in our community especially Cremor, of course, because he is the founder of Cremor Springs. And uh, we knew John before he opened Cremor Springs. He wanted to open a craft studio and a co-op. And unfortunately, we were very independent at the time and we didn't get involved. But John was just such a wonderful person to work with that we really gave it a lot of consideration and that, that he's going to be very missed. Uh, the other person that we lost was Len Nordegraff. Um, if you remember a couple of uh, federational, federation, uh, federal, sorry, federal votes uh, ago, Len ran in the Christian Heritage uh, Party, and he was our representative for this area. He never did win, but good on him for trying all those years. He was a lovely gentleman, and he will be also missed. Um, other than that, um, just had a few phone calls from my community having problems getting their vaccines and getting them booked. And I can tell you, um, Mr. Wilson was a great help in that. So if you have problems, call his office and he'll direct you or he'll actually set it up for you. Not him himself, but his staff. So thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Leishman. Thank you for mentioning uh, John Wiggins, certainly an artist in his own right as well as uh, an entrepreneur that brought Creamore Springs Brewery to fruition. So he's certainly to be saluted. Thank you for that. Councillor Lamers, you're next, and then Councillor McKechnie. Go ahead, Mr. Lamers. Thank you, Your Worship. I just had a couple of hall board meetings, March 27th and April 7th in Brentwood. We had the uh, small hall renovations with Terry, and then we had a di small discussion, but amongst the hall themselves and we want to get back to Terry and get a few items whittled out, find out a little bit more details about some stuff. And then on the April 25th or March 25th and April 8th, I had the evening AGM and then the we discussed the uh, FADS documents amongst the Hall members, and we're looking for more information back from Terry on which way to go forward. And then just answering emails and telephone calls. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Lamers. Uh, Councillor McKechnie is next, and then Councillor Patterson. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, first of all, uh, Connie, thanks for uh, letting us know about uh, John Wiggins and Lynn Nordegraff. And, uh, I'm looking out here at my uh, fences around my paddocks and uh, those are fences that Len put in for me about, uh, well, 17 years ago. So uh, yeah, he was a, he was a good, good man and so was uh, John Wiggins. Um, and also too, regarding the vaccinations, yes, I can uh, concur that uh, Jim Wilson's office are doing a good job. They helped me get my vaccination. Uh, the young lady there, uh, who I've known all her life, uh, she said that she's, <laughs> it's my sister, uh, she said that uh, uh, she, at that point, 
she had about uh, 200, uh, she had helped about 200 people get their vaccination appointments. So anyway, uh, good job on that she's done. Uh, so basically, I, yeah, like the rest of you, uh, you know, I, I attended the AGM meeting of the, uh, of the BIA. Uh, the Integrity Commissioner was there. They did a bit of a presentation. Like the rest of you, I was at uh, the uh, uh, various small hall meetings. Uh, I, I attended the Dunedin small hall meeting in person, monitored the others through YouTube. And on Saturday, I met with our new CAO, Mr. Ferguson, and we met and had a good discussion on uh, all things Ward 2 and brought him up to speed on a few of the issues here, amongst other things. So anyway, and it was uh, a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKechnie. Uh, Councillor Patterson, you're next, and then Councillor Deneen. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thank you. I had a couple of meetings on the uh, putting together what could be a 2021-22 program for the Urban Canopy Renewal um, uh, Reserve Program. Uh, a lot of support from Dan. Uh, met with the, the Tree Society. Dan brought in Davies, which is a, um, a horticulturist forester service. Um, See how we can link into that. Uh, no plans have been set yet. And of course it'll come before council before anything is spent, but um, it looks pretty positive. We're trying to have a good mix of uh, uh, doing some basic things like taking an inventory perhaps in Cremor and uh, Stainer, uh, renewing the one we have and, uh, and trying to put some trees in the ground um, uh, in, in some uh, pilot form um, one, one thing I would note, though, is that while we have a fairly established, um, well-established the Tree Society in Cremor, which covers the urban area, we are trying to expand that same kind of uh, resonant involvement uh, into the rest of Clearview, and in particular Stainer. And um, I think there's an article coming out in this week's uh, Echo from the Tree Society, and I asked them to put in a reference uh, to people in Stainer that they're interested in, in joining this effort uh, as a volunteer um, to let us know. And uh, so I, I extend that invitation as well. It, uh, um, it would be good to see us uh, looking at the urban canopy uh, across the township, especially in all our urban areas. Um, I mentioned the uh, MVCA permitting, so I won't talk any more about that. Uh, took a spent a lot of time on bio sludge and uh, bio solids. Had several good discussions and exchanges with. Uh, with Mike, uh, Mike Ron, and uh, feel, uh, uh, received quite a few, uh, five or six uh, phone calls um, uh, with some urgency, quite frankly, uh, about the uh, uh, the spreading of uh, biosolids, um, both from our plant and apparently from other locations, uh, in the category of uh, non-agricultural sourced uh, materials that are being spread on our farms. It's always a controversial issue for people, especially who don't have all the information. And even for those that have a lot of the information, they have concerns about the practice. Um, and so I think there's more, I would like to see council discuss it uh, in more detail uh, uh, in the not too distant future. We have one going on right now in uh, Cremor, an injection of uh, biosolids in the field on the corner of uh, six, seven and uh, concession three, the rear entrance of Cremor. Um, um, and the smell is one thing, uh, but there's a real concern with uh, Jason Doug Wells, um, uh, all under the supervision of the MOE and, uh, and inspectors apparently coming out in the next couple of days to look at the operation uh, whenever it gets restarted again. But the, the, there's, a, there's a list of concerns that I have in terms of prior notice. And uh, one thing that struck out, that struck for me is that we, we don't think of that area as an urban area uh, because it's a farm. Uh, so technically it's farmland, it's agricultural, but it's in our settlement area. And, and we have young families and older families that live adjacent to it. There was no prior notice. I'm not sure if we even have a provision to do that. Not us, but either Collis or the operator, in this case, uh, the, the region of uh, Huronia um, Environmental Service. Um, and they do a lot of work for us, as Mike could explain. Uh, but but it, it did raise quite a, a few, or at least orange flags. Uh, uh, there's, you know, like we get, we get signs on the lawn with regards to pesticides being placed on your lawn. Um, and, and so there's no harmful contact. It's a precautionary measure, uh, p people and pets. But no such uh, precaution, warning, communication seems to exist with this process. So I would like uh, at a future meeting 
um, have more discussion, do a little bit more research, talk to my uh, a broader understanding what the cost is to us to, to get rid of the biosolid byproduct from our plants. And is it necessary that it be spread on farms? We have to include the farm community. So um, it raised a lot of thoughts and, uh, and I would, uh, I'm gonna spend a little more time on it and uh, see what, uh, if council's interested, uh, and I hope they are. Um, I think we should respond to some of the, uh, the public concerns I've had. And, and, and you're hearing it from Cremor because it's so adjacent to the urban area. We may not hear about it as much in the rural areas where it's seen as a, a regular farm activity. But uh, anyway, I bring that to your attention now and uh, stay tuned for something I may bring back to council. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Councillor Deneen is next and then Councillor Broderick. Hello, Phyllis. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I didn't mention it at the last meeting, but uh, I had my first AstraZeneca inoculation on March 12th. I'm now four weeks past that. I'd like to announce to everybody that there are no new appendages growing anywhere that I've noticed so far. Everything is good and not to make light of it. It went great. It went, it went like clockwork. It was at the Legion in Collingwood. Um, and it was just amazing how they put so many people through in such a short, short period of time and kudos to all of those people working there. It was really amazing. Um, we had uh, the Nottawa Hall special meeting on the 31st and we're hoping that uh, we can bring the, um, the meeting to our public regarding the AODA requirements. And um, we're waiting for, we'll wait for better, better weather, I'm hoping, so we can do it maybe outside in our new parking lot and see what kind of um, response we get to it, just to let them know and update everyone if they're interested. Um, our scrap donation bins that we've been running for the last month or so, we've really done well the donations. Um, I think we're on our sixth bin. Uh, I'll be able to report that to the um, to the hall on Thursday. I've asked for a grand total to date. We also had a um, a uh, if you had a bike, leave a bike. Need a bike, take a bike. Thing. Don't put your bikes in the in the bin. So far, we've rehomed about a dozen bikes. A few tires have disappeared. Uh, a person that has a, has a tugboat needed some bumpers. There's been one scooter, one tricycle disappears. So all in all, it's really positive and it's doing a great job and there should be a new bin there for today, later, and we'll keep it going. I'm thinking probably until after this lockdown anyway, because nobody's doing much of anything but working around home. Um, and I just uh, beg everybody a little bit of um, time here. I'd like to make a, a motion for our next council meeting, if, if you'll indulge me. Um, I would like to, uh, to um, make a motion, uh, be it resolved that the council of the Township of Clearview hereby direct staff to, to, repair, to prepare a report for the April 26, 2021 Council meeting, outlining financial assistance to the Clearview Stainer Food Bank in the amount of $10,000 to be funded from the Clearview COVID-19 Community Assistance Fund and the 2021 Community Assistance Grant. Um, it's been six months since we did this last, and if you can't hear me, I'm sorry. My connection just told me I was unstable, but um, I would like to bring that motion forward for our next council meeting, if, um, if, I, if I may. Thank you. Great, uh, thank you. Yeah, we did hear you. Your video broke up a little bit, but we heard uh, what you said. Thank you, Councillor Denis. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking procedurally, um, we could, accept that right now uh, as a motion and have staff prepare 
uh, report or give us indication if we can do that at our next meeting. Uh, if council's comfortable, we could do that. I'll ask for a seconder. Councillor Leishman, thank you. Is there any question on uh, Councillor Deneen's suggestion of a, uh, a report for the April 26th council meeting? Very good. I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries unanimous. Thank you very much, Councillor Deneen. That's a good idea. We'll let council prepare uh, or let staff prepare something for council to consider uh, as a motion. Thank you for that. Very good. Uh, council, thank you. Are you finished, Councillor Deneen? Yes, thank you. Okay, good job. Uh, Councillor Broderick, you're next, and then Councillor Walker. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've had a number of complaints from uh, Stainer residents uh, regarding their neighbors. I just want to remind everybody that uh, we're all going through a, a pretty, pretty tough times right now. And uh, please not only uh, be considerate of your neighbors, but uh, please be kind to your neighbors. Um, moving forward, uh, April the 13th, I have an upcoming accessibility advisory committee meeting. And uh, also on the 13th, I will also be having a uh, Zoom meeting with our new CAO, John Ferguson. Welcome to Clearview again, John. April the 20th, uh, we will be uh, having a library uh, board meeting. And on the 21st, we have a uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting coming up. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Broderick. Uh, just before you go any further, I just want to point out that our council is getting a little more complicated. We now have three people by the name John. We have two people with the name Doug. We have two people with the last name Burton, but there's no doubt we have one Phyllis and one Connie, and that's good with me. <laughs> Very good. Councillor Walker, you're next. You could also say you have one moose, but that wouldn't work. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, other than the, uh, the, uh, all the meetings uh, for the uh, hall boards, um, we had a youth committee meeting on the 6th of April. And I, I just want to say, what can, we, what can we say? We open, close, open, close, open, close. Uh, the staff are so excited to, they were so excited to get open. Uh, attendance was a little slow, but then it started to pick up. And then, of course, we had to close the doors again this, this last week. The 50 kits they had, they were giving out, they increased that to 75, and they're all out. And I might say that those kits are maybe a, are a blessing in disguise, because what, we, what it has allowed us to do is reach out to every corner of Clearview Township to the youth. Before, we know it was those that could come to the youth center or had rides to come to the youth center. Now it's they're registering, staff are delivering the, the uh, kits to, so we're to every corner of Clearview. So we are touching new, new youth that we didn't have before, which to me is, is what we're all about and what we're trying to do. Um, if everything goes right, we are planning to fully reopen in June but we have no control over that. We will see how that plays out. Um, they have a plan park program, which is outdoor mobile youth program. Uh, food handlers course, virtual online, and they've had 12 sign up for that. Ages four to ages, uh, science-based workshops for, for a school kids, two kids, 15 youth per, Per, per uh, workshop and they're full. Virtual youth night, four weeks, one night a week, nine is signed up. There's games, paint night, escape room, movie night, all virtual. Outreaching youth uh, joining programs online who normally would not come to the center. So the youth uh, staff are working so hard to try and help with our youth and keep them occupied and keep them um, stable and help them with, with the trying times they're in right now. So uh, to staff, uh, commend the youth staff and Terry and, and, and his gang for what they're doing there. 
It's wonderful. It's amazing. Going off of youth, I just want to say thank you to the township staff who have been out on the main entrances to the Stainer doing the sweeping and the sidewalk cleaning, etc. And they certainly made a, a big difference that way as well. Uh, that is my report, Your Worship, uh, for uh, this evening. Thank you very much, Councillor Walker. You're right. We only have one moose, and we're happy to have you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy Mayor Burton, do you have anything you'd like to add for tonight? Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, first of all, I want to, I want to uh, echo what uh, Councillor Walker has said, and I make my apologies that I haven't been able to attend the, uh, the committee meetings as I've just been tied up in other meetings, but I certainly pay attention to what's going on. We have a remarkable staff and doing a remarkable job at the youth center for what they're doing, and, and it's just so proud of what they've what they're doing and, and and what we've accomplished there. We we should be very happy. Um, uh, I want to say that uh, I attended the evening hall uh, meeting regarding the uh, you know the renovations and what's expected and all that, which was good. On March 29th, I attended a meeting uh, in regards to the Banting uh, Memorial uh, thing that's going on. It's the 100th anniversary of uh, the, the discovery of insulin, and there's a big celebration by the uh, Diabetic Society and the Medical Society. So um, we'll be asking for sponsorship money from the county on that uh, tomorrow. Uh, um, I attended the, the uh, Clearview Economic Development Committee uh, last week, which we had uh, lots of discussions. And then also tomorrow night is Committee, is the committee of Adjustments, uh, or Wednesday night is Committee of Adjustments. And um, also, I, I would like to say that uh, tomorrow the mayor and I will be. Um, it's further on our item, but tomorrow we will be uh, calling on, on fellow members of county council to, su to support us in defeating the appeal for our, our uh, committee of adjustment decision to grant a, a severance uh, to a property on uh, County Road 91. And uh, I'd like to say, to finish things off, I met with John Ferguson. And I want to say welcome, John, and I want to say how lucky we are to have a gentleman with such great experience and knowledge in the municipal world, both from a, you know, a, a staff point of view and, and from a council point of view. So glad to have you here and uh, looking forward. Thanks. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Very good. Yes, I look forward to that discussion tomorrow at County Council regarding the uh, um, severance that's been asked for the properties along uh, County Road 91. Certainly we hope that uh, members of County Council will consider uh, the best interests of, uh, of what residents really want in our communities. Um, I just have a couple of things I'd like to mention in Council. Um, first of all, I want to acknowledge and thank members of our Clearview Fire Department for joining me uh, to raise the beadonor.ca flag. And, uh, and Mr. Ferguson also joined us. That was really nice. Um, I'm really happy that uh, April continues to be Be A Donor Month in Clearview, as well as right across the country. Uh, as you know, you've probably seen me wear this green ribbon in, uh, at different times, and it's, uh, it's an important thing to me, and I'm really happy that it continues to be supported uh, across uh, our community and across this uh, country. Please uh, consider being a donor. If you are not, uh, register at beadonor.ca. Um, Council, I had the pleasure uh, through our uh, administrative assistant, uh, Jen, she booked me for two separate drive-by celebrations in our community that were 60th wedding anniversaries. So I had the pleasure of uh, joining the Bells in their driveway and also the Wyants in their driveway for a, uh, uh, a little celebration of 60 years anniversary. So congratulations to the, uh, to the happy couples, 60 years. Uh, Council, I also have been attending a, a, a new a group in our area. It's the Regional Mayors and CAOs Committee. Uh, CAO Ferguson and myself attended along with uh, uh, mayors from our neighboring municipalities. And uh, we hope to uh, be able to report back to you at Council about some of the activities that this group may bring forward as uh, regional issues. Uh, and further, um, I will be meeting later this week regarding uh, Physician Recruitment and Retention Committee. There's some uh, big decisions being made by that committee in regards to whether or not uh, we as a committee, 
and as a group of communities, we'll be able to actually, uh, excuse me, hire someone to be a recruiter to perform the duties of a physician recruitment. It's, um, it's a little disappointing, honestly, that uh, the funding that's needed to do that is just not being made available. And I know that some of our neighboring communities who are participants in this committee uh, have done their best to, to uh, make the pitch that this is an important aspect. And I'm grateful and thankful to this council for conti continuing to support that as an important aspect of our community. And uh, we, uh, we hope to, to see it be successful to bring physicians to our community. Uh, the last thing I want to mention, Council, on Friday, uh, the world heard of the uh, passing of the Duke of Edinburgh, and I want to acknowledge and thank John uh, Ferguson, our, our CIO, for directing the lowering of our flags across our community, and I believe that uh, they will remain uh, down until uh, such time as the uh, funeral is completed, which I believe is on Saturday, so sometime over the weekend the flags may return to full staff, but I want to just acknowledge and thank um, uh, that, uh, John, that you were able to do that. And also, I uh, want you to know I extended our condolences to Her Majesty the Queen on behalf of our community. So I uh, just wanted you to know that uh, we sent that uh, message along. Thank you very much, Council. And that was good. We got through our ward reports. At this time, we have a, a lot of things yet to cover on our agenda. So let's uh, carry on. Council, item number 12 is Community Services, uh, CS022 2021 County Appeal regarding the consent application that we just spoke about, uh, item number 20-B128847, County Road 91. Recommendation be it resolved that Council of the Township of Clearview hereby receive CS022-2021 report for information. Can I have a mover and a seconder and then we'll hear from Mayor Burton. Uh, that'd be the Deputy Mayor and John Broderick. And uh, Mara, thank you for joining us. We'd like to speak to the issue. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to let Council know that Essentially, we have the applicant and the applicant has their uh, planner and then it's the County of Simcoe uh, planning department and uh, they have representation as well that's appealing the application. So there's really no place for the municipality to need to hire a lawyer or send representation to this LPAT hearing should it proceed. Um, so it's really just uh, for information. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Mara, for that uh, brief uh, description. Any members of council? Okay, then I'll uh, prepare. Thank you, Mara, and I'll prepare to call the motion then. All those in favor? And that carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mara. Council, moving on. Page number four on our agenda. Can you imagine? We're way up there on page four. Uh, Public Works. This is a notice of amendments to the source water protection. Plan recommendation be it resolved that Council of the Township be reviewed here by one receive the notice of amendment to the source protection plan from the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority and it's dated March the 3rd, 2021. For information, can I have a mover and seconder on that motion, please? Where are we at? Councillor Broderick, Councillor Lamers, any questions or comments? Seeing none, Mike, would you like to make a comment on it, uh, on the report? Um. Certainly, Your Worship. So just for information, we're, as council, you're the owners of the system. Um, owners of the water systems have a lot of responsibility. Um, this particular series of um, series of projects, whatever you want to call it, in order to establish a new well supply, right, there's Environmental Assessment Act, and now we're into the Clean Water Act. So the Southern Georgian Bay Lake Simcoe Source Protection Region Committee met on March 31st. There was a presentation by our engineers, uh, Devin Hannon from Golden Associates and Ryan Post, who is our, uh, our RMO and representative from the NVCA um, to the Source Protection Committee. Um, they, they approved recommendation to the MECP unanimously. I got to, I had the, uh, the opportunity to explain why you know, the well supply was such a much better answer than the pipeline and, and they appreciated that, uh, that knowledge. Um, so if, you know, I'm not gonna go through this, but council should know, you know, there's a lot of responsibility there. And if you happen to scroll down through all the different documents, if you see step 5A, that, that's where we are right now. So we're into this about two years, there's 10 months left to go on the 
source water protection aspect. And when we get to step 5E, we'll be requesting a recommendation or a resolution of this council to support it. If council would like some, you know, knowledge about how all this works, I'd certainly bring in maybe a hydrogeologist from Golder. Um, it is very detailed. And if you scroll down and you get to look at the flow chart, you'll understand why I'm not trying to explain the entire document <laughs> because it is a little onerous. But uh, just for council's information, um, I thought, you know, you, you should be up to speed on some of this stuff. The EA is actually wrapped up. We'll probably have RJ Burnside do a presentation similar as what we did with the, um, the Southeast Sewer EA. You're welcome to read that on our website. It's only about a thousand pages. So that's one part of it. This is the second part of it. Um, and that's all. Great, thank you, Mike. Anybody with any questions to Mike on this uh, good news story? All right, thank you, Mike. I appreciate your details on these things, Mike. We really do. We thank you for all that. Members of council, I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? Yeah, that motion carries, thank you very much. All right, PW014, this is the established public highway. Um, which is part of what I mentioned earlier as part of our discussion from in camera. Recommendation, be it resolved, the Council of the Township of Clearview hereby one, receive PW 014 2021 to establish a public highway, report for information, and item two, pass a bylaw to establish certain lands as a public highway. Okay, can I have a mover and seconder and then we'll hear from Dan. Uh, Mr. Walker, Mr. Broderick, and thank you. Dan, uh, actually a very good news story here as well. Go ahead, Dan. Thank you, Worship. Not much to, else to add. I think it's been discussed uh, quite a bit at, the, at this meeting, but this is just to formalize the process of uh, adding those properties into the public highway system yeah. with the bylaw. Yeah, with a bylaw. And I think the, the clarity on that, of course, is that many properties are previously had other zoning on them and to move them into the public highway that removes any other zoning that may have been applied to them. So, so that's an important point to, to keep that in mind. And sometimes we get tied up in the details of little slivers of land or what the actual zoning is on them. So it's important to, when we move it into a public highway. All right, so thank you, Dan, for that. Any questions to Dan, members of council? All right, council, I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries unanimous, thank you. All right, Council, PW015, this is in regards to a staff recommendation for a speed limit reduction on the Hogback Road and Concession 2 in, in or near New Lowell. Recommendation be it resolved that Council of the Township Clearview, hereby one, receive a PW015 2021 speed limit reduction, Hogback Road and Concession 2 report for information, item two, pass a bylaw to establish a certain rates of speed on a public highway. Mover and seconder to get it on the floor. Councillor Lamers, second. Councillor Deneen, thank you. Mr. Uh, Perot, would you like to comment on this report? Thank you, Worship. Um, this is just a, a follow-up to uh, Council's uh, bylaw that they passed back in November. Um, staff have been working uh, quite hard and finally have had some success with Hydro One specifically on putting in a, a street light there. And I, I believe it was, became operational last week. So uh, yeah. this is um, uh, further further measures to to increase the safety of that intersection. Um, we, we consulted or I consulted with our traffic uh, expert and provided us uh, some some direction and some advice on uh, on how to uh, further uh, implement some some measures at that intersection to uh, to complete it. So, uh, if um, if staff does or sorry, if, if council does uh, agree with my report and pass the bylaw, uh, we hope to have uh, that intersection uh, fully signed and, and uh, completed by uh, hopefully by the end of this week, if not uh, early next week. Is that right? Oh. Okay, uh, members of council, any questions to Dan in regards to this? I see the deputy mayor I'm looking for anybody else. Go ahead, deputy mayor Burton. Uh, in a related question, thank you, your worship, uh, Dan. So when do we expect this uh, travel, or this, uh, this road study to be completed? And we've, we've talked about it, we've heard so much, but do we have an idea when we might actually see? 
the comprehensive road study you're just speaking of, Dan? Yes, uh, what's I am. You? Sorry, yeah, the comprehensive road study. Yeah, that's... Thank you, Your Worship, through to Deputy Mayor Burton. I last I spoke with uh, with, with Henry Senton was uh, that uh, we're I was expecting it in two weeks, and that was about two weeks ago. So um, I, I expect the draft of it for for our review, staff review, um, anytime now, and uh, hoping to come to council in uh, you know shortly after that, depending on depending on the review of the the document, of course. But uh, you know, spring of spring of twenty twenty one. We're still in spring. We just started spring, so we're we're imminent. I'm hoping. Great. Dan, if I may respectfully, if I can ask you to please communicate with council as soon as we have an understanding as to when that would be and work with the CAO if you need to, to, uh, to see if we can finalize getting that report. That'd be really helpful to members of council, I'm sure, because uh, although we have this report in front of us tonight, there are many roads in our township that uh, we have committed uh, that we are going to review and, and pass and or we're going to consider making changes to. So we desperately need that information sooner than later. Does that sound fair, Dan? Sure. And I'll, I'll oh, sorry. And I'll touch base with our, uh, our traffic expert again uh, here this week. Thank you. And thank you, Deputy Mayor, for bringing that forward. Any further questions in regards to this specific report that uh, we're already speaking about tonight? Okay. All right, well, thank you. Uh, I'll just comment. Thank you for bringing forward the report and I appreciate um, that uh, this change of speed is an additional measure to help us uh, create a safer intersection at that intersection in our community. So um, while the four-way stop is one, the painting that you're talking about is another, the street light, the uh, potential of removing some brush, I guess, on the northwest corner, is a possibility as well. It will also enhance the intersection safety and the speed reduction approaching this four way as a, a, a positive step too. So please be safe on the roads, people. All right. Just if, I, if I might yes. add, if yes. I might add your worship, worship um, I'm just waiting for a call back from the county forester. Okay. Um, on permission to for that north uh, that northwest bank there. Yeah. Um, just just waiting back from him. Uh, to hear from him. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't get permission, let me know. I know guys with chainsaws, okay? All right, <laughs> thanks, Dan. Members of council, I'm prepared to call the motion. All those in favor? All right, and that motion carries. Thank you very much, Dan, and thank you, staff, for, for your report. All right, council, uh, we've got a report from the finance department. Uh, I know Kelly's been here. She's been chatting along. Here she is. Hi, Kelly. Uh, finance report, Youth Center Lease Renewal. Uh, be it resolved that Council of the Township of Clearview hereby, one, receive the Youth Center Lease Renewal in Report for information, and item two, approve bylaw number 21-40 to enter into an agreement with uh, AFTAB Enterprises Incorporated to renew the lease agreement for two years at $2,328.25 per month plus HST and authorize the mayor and our acting clerk, director of legislative services to sign the lease on behalf of the township of Clearview. All right, I'll take a mover and second here, then we'll get a comment from Kelly. Deputy Mayor Burton and Councillor Walker. And Kelly, uh, you have reviewed this. Is this satisfactory to, to the needs of the township as far as our finance department goes? I, thank you, Worship. It's a very standard lease. Um, our lease did expire on March 31st, so this one will take effect retroactively. Um, and it is a little bit more than we had budgeted, but I'm confident that the uh, youth center coordinator can um, pull in grants to cover any deficiencies. She's been doing an amazing job so far. I, I can't see any problem there. All right, and through that to, uh, to Terry, who's the manager in that department, I'm confident that Terry would bring forward any, uh, any discrepancies that, uh, that may come up and we'll have to deal with it at that time. So thank you, Kelly. Any council members with any questions to Kelly or her staff on this? All right, seeing none, uh, thank you, Kelly. I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And the motion carries, thank you. All right, again, moving on. Next page. Uh, we're already up to bylaws, we're on page five. Council, here's a good one. This is bylaw number 21-34. 
It's a bylaw to appoint the chief administrative officer. Recommendation, be it resolved that bylaw number 2134, being a bylaw to appoint a chief administrative officer, be presented at read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. A mover and seconder on this motion. Deputy Mayor Burton, Councillor Broderick. And uh, Mr. Ferguson, would you like to say anything at this time? As we're about to appoint you officially as our CAO. I, uh, I don't know if I'd be in a conflict to say anything for council at this time. <laughs> I hope they vote the way they would like to vote. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. And uh, uh, it, it was a, uh, a process that we went through to, to secure uh, a new chief administrative officer. And again, you've been welcomed in this meeting as well as in person many times. So thank you for joining us. Members thank of you. council, is there any questions? Um, prepare to call the motion. All those in favor? And that motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Ferguson. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Item 2135 is a fire safety grant transfer agreement uh, from our fire department. Be it resolved that bylaw 2135, being a bylaw to enter into a fire safety grant transfer payment agreement, be presented at read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. I have a mover and second around the motion. Please. Mr. Broderick and Councillor Lamers. Mr. Broderick, Councillor Lamers, and uh, is there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? And the bylaw carries. Council, 2136 is to stop up and close to Claire Surplus Lands, Douglas Street. Oh boy. Yeah, quick game, see if we can find Douglas Street. Uh, be, re be it resolved that bylaw 2136, being a bylaw to uh, stop up, close, declare surplus, and convey part of Douglas Street, plan 385. He presented it read a first, second, and third time and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. I have a mover and seconder on the, this bylaw, Walker and uh, Leishman, Walker and Leishman. Mr. Ron, do you wanna speak briefly on that? Uh, certainly, Your Worship, I kind of forgot this one was coming up today. It's been on the agenda for a couple of weeks. Um, how do I... So from closed camera direction from last fall, we were instructed to, to do some uh, uh, property negotiations. One of the properties had a, um, an old plan of subdivision from I'd say the 1890s, included Douglas Street. In order to finalize the, or secure the easement that we were trying to do, um, we needed to release our interest in Douglas Street as part of the negotiation. And it will all be apparent in a few weeks at a council meeting at, when we finalize everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think you can find Douglas Street on a map, but anyway, that's great. Thank you. Uh, members of council, have you got any further questions to Mike in regards to this? All right, council, uh, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And the bylaw carries, thank you. All right. Um, Okay, this is uh, Hillard to Brock. We're gonna rename Hillard Street to Brock Street. This is a little bit of housekeeping. Be it resolved that bylaw 2137, being a bylaw to rename Hillard Street to Brock Street, be presented at read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on this 12th day of April, uh, 2021. Okay, a mover and seconder. This is also a nice little housekeeper. Uh, Mr. Walker and Mr. Broderick, and uh, I can just help you out here that uh, there are absolutely no addresses on Hillard Street at this time. And it's a little wee parcel of land that got named way back when the town of Stainer named the street. There's no addresses on that street. So renaming it into Brock Street makes it a housekeeping matter. All right, any council questions? All right, yes, Mr. Walker, go ahead. Um. Where did we get that map from? <laughs> Mike or Dan, I'm not sure who's got that. <laughs> I know when I asked Brenda about it, I was like, what? I've never heard of that one before. <laughs> Mara, maybe? I, don't know. I know where the street is, but we don't have a Huron Street going up in the middle of the downtown. Yeah. <laughs> Mara, where, where is that? Well, firstly, it's I can help you with this because it actually came up through something else that our lawyer was doing for us. And we found out that Brock Street actually hasn't been formally named by bylaw. 
So really all we're doing is formally naming Brock Street by bylaw, Brock Street. So, <laughs> so there's still a little segment of Hellier Street um, and that's fine if it's called Brock Street because it's gonna be absorbed into land at some point in time and it won't be a street. But actually what we're doing is we're naming Brock Street, Brock Street. How crazy is that guys? Fun with maps. <laughs> All right. You know, at another time, uh, Mara, I'm going to talk to you about Dominion Street and Caroline Street in Stainer. Because Caroline Street doesn't exist in Stainer, it only exists in Cremor. And yet, on my GPS, Caroline Street keeps coming up whenever I go down Dominion Street, just so you know. Anyway. We try to clean these up as we find them. I know, no, no doubt. Thank you very much. Kelsey, you've got your good explanation on the Brock Street renaming or fixing up problems from the past. All those in favor? There you go, that motion carries. Okay, um, 2138 is the established highway regarding Mowat Street. And that's also part of the things we talked about earlier. So be it resolved that bylaw 2138 being a bylaw to establish lands as part of the municipal highway system. Be presented over at a first, second and third time and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. Mover and seconder on this motion, please. Where are we at? Mr. Lamers, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Lamers and the Deputy Mayor. And uh, any questions on that one? Good discussion on this. All those in favor? And the bylaw carries, thank you. Uh, 2139 is the bylaw on desk that I showed you earlier in regards to appointments. So recommendation be it resolved that bylaw 2139, it being a bylaw to amend appointment bylaw 19-06. Be presented a read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. And have a mover and seconder on that motion, please. Deputy Mayor and Councillor Broderick, and Council, all those in favor. And that bylaw carries. Thank you. And again, thank you to our volunteers who contribute to our township every day. All right, Council, I'm moving on to the last page. We've got a few more things here. 2140 being a youth center lease agreement. Uh, be it resolved, bylaw 2140 being a bylaw to authorize the execution with uh, uh, AFTAB Enterprises, be it presented and read it for a second and third time and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021, our youth center lease agreement. Uber and seconder, please. Where are we at? Uh, Mr. Walker and Deputy Mayor. Walker and Deputy Mayor. And you've heard the bylaw, all those in favor? And that motion carries, or bylaw carries. Uh, the prescribing of the rate of speed at Hogback 2141. Recommendation be it resolved that bylaw 2141 being a bylaw to prescribe a rate of speed for motor, motor or motor vehicle drive on certain public highways be presented at read a first, second, and third time. And finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. 20, yeah, bylaw 2141. Now I have a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Lamers, Councillor McKechnie, Lamers and McKechnie. And uh, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that bylaw passes unanimous, thank you. Um, another person adding to our staff, uh, Mr. CAO, we're also adding our deputy chief. Uh, appoint the deputy chief. Recommendation be it resolved that bylaw 2143, being a bylaw to appoint a deputy fire chief, be presented at read a first, second and third time and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. I have a mover and seconder on this. Mr. Broderick, Councillor Deneen. Broderick and Councillor Deneen. And uh, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? And that carries unanimous. Welcome Chief to, uh, to our township. And I hope that you have a, uh, a good time servicing our township as our Deputy Chief. Um, Council, I'm up to item number 13, notice of motion, new business. Uh, was there any further items in there? No? Okay, uh, we didn't have anything. So bylaw to confirm the proceedings of our council meeting. Recommendation, be it resolved that bylaw 2141, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the April 12th, 2021 council meeting, be presented and read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed on the 12th day of April, 2021. Move and seconder on the confirmation bylaw. Uh, Councillor McKechnie. And Councillor, where are we? Oh, Deputy Mayor, Deputy Mayor Burton, you're, you're shining there. Uh, Councillor McKechnie, Deputy Mayor, all those in favor? And the confirmation bylaw carries. 
Council, I have a motion to adjourn it to item 15. Nothing further for the good of this meeting. Uh, I will call upon Councillor McKechnie and seconded by Councillor Deneen recommendation that the uh, be it resolved that the council meeting be adjourned at 8.25 p.m. here on Monday evening. Nothing further, all those in favor? That uh, motion carries. And so I congratulate you all on getting through our first meeting in April. Welcome to spring. Please stay safe, please stay home and go get yourself vaccinated if you possibly can. Thank you everyone.